This is a Fox Sports presentation. Hey, time for a pop quiz, sports fans. What do you get when you cross some leader hosing and schnitzel with some bagpipes and kilts? <laughs> it's easy. Frankfurt versus Scotland. It's a Fox NFL special, World Bowl 96. Last year, the Galaxy took the world by storm. Today, the boys from Frankfurt defend their title as they clash with the Claymores in Scotland. The Galaxy is instilled with the toughness of veteran coach Ernie Stockner, while former Cowboy QB Steve Fleur is their field general. The Claymores have been hard to stop. Sir Ann Stacy's been running wild, while league MVP Sean LaChapelle has soared to greatness. And the Scots D can even bring the Galaxy back to Earth. The Frankfurt Galaxy and the Scottish Claymores. The eyes of the world are upon them. Now, live from Hollywood, four guys who can talk football in any language. It's world famous, a Fox NFL special, World Bowl 96. Welcome to stage seven here in Hollywood. And even though it's just the first week of summer, it's time for football again. It's the World Bowl featuring not only these Pipers, but the Scottish Playmores and last year's champions, the Frankfurt Galaxy. And hello everyone, I'm James Brown and thanks for joining us for this year's World Bowl preview. Now, you know, I knew Terry had some pull, but that's pretty doggone impressive, if not loud. Aye, uh, laddie. <laughs> Terry Bradshaw, <laughs> how he thought lost. Merle Haggard was coming, man. Merle Haggard. Now, we knew that we were going to snatch you guys off of vacation, but how did you pull John Madden off of the bus? I called his agent. Agent wouldn't return my phone call, so I called Jimmy Johnson, who used to sit down there. Jimmy says, John, do anything I want to do, because he'd be wanting to interview me later on in the year. Oh. So, it, Jimmy called John, and John said, of course. Yeah, and he told me that, you know, that you got pipers, and you got football going on in June, and there's no way I can pass that one up. You know how hard it is to find four guys like that in Hollywood? <laughs> Not real hard. You're about one block up on Sunset, Bub. I can show you a bunch of those guys. Uh, how, how he's getting ready for his next movie, a comedy, no question about it. All right, folks, let's swing around here and talk a little bit of football. Time now for our Fox Watch, and for that, we send it over to the guys who will be calling today's championship game, Kevin Harlan and Matt Millen. And guys, it's good when the championship ends up with the two best teams, and that's exactly what we have in Scotland and Frankfurt. <laughs> It's going to be a great day for football as you see some of the tremendous history that lives this countryside. Castles, the ruins of Scotland. We are in Edinburgh, Scotland. This is World Bowl 96 as the Frankfurt Gallery will take on the Scottish Claymores. Scottish Claymores right now a very good team. In fact, they finished the season 6-3. And, and as for the Frankfurt Galaxy, they finished 7-4. Now, let's talk about Scott. Very hot team with a good quarterback in Jim Ballard. I like Jim Ballard. You know, at the beginning of the season, he was not playing. He was kind of itching. He wanted to get in there. Finally got his chance, and boy, he is taking that chance and run with him. He plays with a chip on his shoulder. I like what he does. He's improved this offense. Could be the difference in this game. Defense in Scotland is a bit banged up up right now. Number one earlier on, now they're down to number four. That defense will go up against NFL veteran Steve Ballour, the quarterback for Frankfurt. Well, you know, Steve Ballour, when he was in the National Football League with Kansas City and also with the Dallas Cowboys, he's one of those guys who would take off by some time to make big plays. Well, he doesn't take off and run so much anymore, but he does have the big play ability. Now, Scotland's going to win this game. They're going to have to limit those big plays. It'll be a good matchup. Scotland against Frankfurt. We now go back to Hollywood, and here's James Brown. All right, Kevin, thank you very much. As we come back inside to the experts, John, I know you said no matter what level of play, any time that tag of championship is there, it's important. Yeah, and I think you can feel the excitement there when you see Matt Millen talking about what's going to go on in the competition, and that is really what it's all about. I mean, we can talk about, you know, what these guys are playing for and, the, you know, whether they're going to be in the Allen foul or not. But I think the big thing is today is a championship game, and after this game, one of these teams will be the world champion for the 1996 world. Yeah, championships are won on the ground, as Dallas has shown. And 
Saran Sacy in two games versus Frankfurt, 50 rushes, 235 yards, but no touchdowns. And Sean LaChapelle, an interesting story. His junior year, he's ready to come out on the way to the press conference. His wide receiver coach talks him out of it. He comes back. He's replaced by a guy by the name of J.J. Stokes. It's been downhill since then. I talked to Ronnie Lott. He says this guy's for real. He had him in camp in Kansas City. This guy's got a shot at making it. Yeah, you, you look at the two teams. You know, no one is really set. Who do they expect to win this football game? You got Galaxy, you got the Claymores, which we had to look up to figure out where they got those names. But I'll be the one guy up here who's not afraid to step out and say that the Claymores playing on one, beat these guys two times, won all five of their games at home. I'm saying right now the Scottish Claymores kick butt, take names today. That's what I'm going to say. Scary. It is, is he, frightening. How do you do June. it? Now you study, Howie. You I mean, study. You're, you're either in the back of the pack or you're a leader. That's right. This man knows everything. That's why oh, he was a great man. one. Before hey, it happens. Let, yeah. let me hear you say that Frankfurt nickname again. Yeah. You know what it is. Nostradamus. <laughs> <laughs> Once again. I like that. All right, folks. We're having fun already. Coming up next, it's the 96 World Bowl. Will Frankfurt win their second title in as many years, as Terry says, or will Scotland, who had the best record during the regular season, follow that up with a victory today? It's all next, right here on Fox. Hey, Mr. Ripken, how you doing? Pretty good, how about yourself? Uh, tired of the grind. The pond for World Bowl 96 is the regular season champion Scottish Claymores against the defending World League champions Frankfurt Galaxy. All right, and calling the game Kevin Harlan and Matt Millen. The tape is button so I can hit it. For a millennia, the tattoo of the bagpipe has called Scotland's heroes to defend her land and her honor. A new challenge presents itself as a Germanic horde invades the Scottish Midlands. The Frankfurt Galaxy and the Scottish Claymores clash in World Bowl 96 as a season's worth of emotion and sweat will rise to a crescendo and determine who will conquer the world. It's the NFL's biggest day in Europe. The parties began earlier today and will continue late into the evening. All taking place outside Mirafield. Now we are inside Mirafield in Edinburgh, Scotland. Fox TV Sports presents the championship game. The World League of American Football is Ernie Stautner's Frankfurt Galaxy will take on Jim Kreiner and the Scottish Claymore. Ernie Stautner, so much great success in the NFL. Defensive coordinator for the famed doomsday defense of the Dallas Cowboys. And for the second year in a row, he takes his team into the World Bowl. Facing the former coach at Iowa State, that man Jim Kreiner. He's had success at the college level. This year, he is the World League of American Football Coach of the Year. Let's quickly go to the sideline and join former Kansas City Chief All-Pro defensive lineman, Bill Moss. Bill? Scotland will be kicking off. And so the Frankfurt Galaxy and Steve Pallor will have it first. There you see Gavin Hastings. And deep back for the Galaxy, they've got speed merchant Mario Bailey, number 81. Gavin Hastings, a former captain of the national rugby squad here in Scotland. World Bowl 96, and we are underway. And they got Bailey back to the eight-yard line. He'll follow Blockers as he takes it upfield. Moving beyond the 20, still on his feet to the 25. Oh! Picked up by Marcus Thomas, and this is a touchdown. But there's a flag down out there, I think.
Quang is down at the 22. And our refereeing crew led by Walt Coleman, an NFL referee, will bring his crew back into the end zone to discuss the play. What a way to begin World Bowl 96. That's a touchdown. No flag. They're going to pick that thing up. Now, Scotland had been having problems in their special teams. Last week, they just got gashed on them. And so they went to work with them. And now you're going to see Mario Bailey finds his crack, and he just starts going. Now, at this point, you're running with your eyes. He you sees something out to the left. George Coghill, 34, comes from behind, and as a good defensive back should do, slaps that thing loose. Marcus Thomas picks it up. It's six points. Extra point is up and in. You know, because of the limited size of rosters over here in this World League, most of all the defensive starters play in the special team. At the beginning of the game like this, when they're fresh, that's great. They get a guy like your starting strong safety, George Coghill, comes down. I mean, that's something the defensive back does all the time. You come from behind, you slap that ball loose, Marcus Thomas picks it up, and it's a big play. Coaches work on that all the time in practice. Oh, yeah, you know, you never can trust those DBs. They're always walking up behind you and smacking the ball, so it worked in that case. So Ernie Stockner's team is quickly down 7 to nothing. as Scottish Claymores, who finished the first half of the season, is the champion with a 4 and one record. Got in automatically and secured the home berth, and then because of their second half of the season finish, Frankfurt got in, and they've won two consecutive games, and have both playoff intensity, and that's why they find themselves in their second consecutive World Bowl. You know, it's funny, though, because the one thing that they didn't want to find themselves in is the situation of being behind early. And now, they don't run the football very well in this offense. And they want to try to give some balance, but if you get behind, you're going to have to throw to get in. Evan Hastings will kick off again, and Bailey will get it on the fly at the three and hold on to it as securely as he can. He's tripped up and taken down. He's the 20 yard line, Marcus Thomas, and a grab. And Bailey, who's been a great receiver for quarterback Steve Pallor, will stay on the field. And there is Pallor, who has had a tremendous last couple weeks, probably right now, the number one rated quarterback in the world league. Yeah, and he's playing like that. I mean, he's going out there with confidence. He's relaxed. And I think that's the key with Steve Pallor. When he can get out there, just relax, find himself, he's got a lot of big plays. In. It'll be interesting to see how they react now and respond to what has been a unbelievable beginning. And on first down, he'll go right to work as Pallor locates his wide receiver, Jay Kearney. He's out by the 25 and close to a first down with the gain of eight. Banged out of play at the 28-yard line. Kearney is one of many weapons that Steve Pallor We'll be using today, as you see, Marcus Thomas, who just recovered the fumble on the kickoff, returned it 24 yards for the touchdown. Seibert, the national from Germany, Wes Bender from USC, Bailey and Kearney, the wideouts, and the tight end is Big Ed Smith. In of nine on the previous play, second down and a yard to go. All defenses play a 43 in the World League, and that's what Pelora studies right now. Back, he's changing the play with the play clock showing zero too much time. And that's one of the big problems in this world league. You know, and I think, you know, the people in the states have to remember, in this league, they start the clock right away. Still second down. They don't wait, like in the National Football League, for guys to kind of get back close to the line of scrimmage. As soon as the play is done, boy, that baby starts rolling. And it's 35 seconds, and it's moving. And so Frankfurt's had a lot of problems with the clock. Because you got the big play, you got to get those big bodies upfield. Takes a lot of time to run up there. Especially when you're George Hegeman at 350. <laughs> Second down, five to go with the penalty, and they swing it out on the wing, and it's caught by Bobby Phillips, the leading rusher, and he's knocked out of bounds short of the first down. Bobby Phillips runs outside. He's allocated by the Minnesota Vikings. Here's the line now. The tackles Collins and Hegeman from the Dallas Cowboys. Baptiste also from Dallas, along with Terrell Green at the right side. And the center is the veteran Toby Mills. I'll tell you about the offensive line play over here in this World League. The one thing that really stood out to me is that the officials don't go holding very much. I mean, sometimes their guys just get just dragged down from behind. Third down and two for Steve Pallor at his own 28-yard line and down seven and nothing to begin the game. And Pallor throws. 
goes, and he's got the first down pass to Ed Smith, tied in out to the 35. Well. The defense in the 43, and on that front line, you'll see some big players, but it's a depleted line because of injuries. John DeWitt, Jeffcoat is the brother of Jim Jeffcoat, and Joe Bryan, and then David Webb on the right side. That is the four down line. First down and 10 from the 36-yard line, and the pitch out goes to Seibert, and he's knocked down behind the line of scrimmage, loses a yard on the play, and he was brought down by linebacker Mark Sander. He was in that linebacking course, some pretty good ones. Arnold Ale played at UCLA. He's number 56, and at one time was with the Kansas City Chiefs. And Shannon Jones, who made that play. I mean, the tackle wasn't made by Jones, but Shannon Jones came up and just lowered the boom on West Bender, the fullback. Turned everything back in and, of course, made the play. There's Shannon Jones. He's fired up early. Play clock is at five, and Steve Pelour calls timeout. See, this is one of the problems. See, they've not been able to manage the clock well. In fact, at a number of times this year, it's been at the beginning of the second quarter, and they've used all their timeouts. And that's a problem they've not been able to work out. Steve Pelour was talking with Brad Bretz, who's got the, uh, the hat on, and he is out of Cal State Hayward. Pelour had gone in a four-game slump with the team. No touchdown passes, seven interceptions. They yanked him, put in the young kid Brad Bretz, who had been in the Dallas and Washington camps. Bretz goes down with the bad knee. Pelour gets redemption, comes back in, and he's been on fire the last couple weeks. It really has. You know, it's funny when you talk to the players and the coaches, what's been the biggest difference? It's simple. His mother-in-law and his wife went home. He can finally play football again. And he's expecting a baby in a couple weeks. <laughs> and I think that's on his mind. His, he has a little one coming his first, and he's really excited about it. I'm sure his wife and his mother-in-law will be very happy to hear that. Don't you think so? Absolutely. Now, this is a training camp atmosphere, too. These players don't live in homes. They live in a hotel all season long. Second down in the yard. They lost one on that first down play. Second down and 11 yards to go. And oh! across the middle as he was looking for wide receiver Jay Kearney who played at West Virginia number 15 had a brief stint with the Kansas City Chiefs and was let go Kearney is the one player who they think has really big play down in and down out ability I mean, they think that Mario Bailey is a guy who can make a big play every now and then but Jay Kearney is the player who can move the chains for him plus still come up with a big play a lot of guys in this league feel like he could make it in a national football league. Not with plays like that. On third and 11, Pulua throws, and it's incomplete. for Mike Bellamy, and it's an incomplete pass, but the penalty flag gives him a first down near the 50. Speaking to Scotland's defensive coordinator, Ray Wilson, the former Raider, he told me if they could get to third down, that would be the key to their game. Now, here's a third down. That comes up big, and of course, they get the interference. interference. This will give them a first down. Defense, number 34, first down. This is George Coghill. He's shown some interest from the Raiders, and he has been one of the harder-hitting players in any secondary in the world league. He lines up now to defend a first and ten from midfield for Frankfurt. Seven nothing. Scotland on top as they return the opening kickoff on a fumble, 24 yards for a touchdown, and Seibert up the middle. In goes Seibert down to the 42, and a gain of eight on first down. You know, the funny thing, when I'm watching this Frankfurt team, the one guy that stands out and reminds me very much of San Francisco's Billy Ring is Ingo Seibert. Now, he's a national player. He's a German native, but he's got that Bill Ring kind of thing of making a play. I mean, you can always count on him. He catches the ball well out of the backfield. He'll block for you. It's not the shiftiest guy, but he'll grunt his way for eight or nine yards. Green eight right there, and here's Phillips trying to get the first down, and he stopped short. He had to get down to the 40, and he stopped inside the 41-yard line. Nice play by linebacker Mark Sander as you get a good look at the great Ernie Staunton. And there's Arnold Allay, number 56, who was also in on the tackle. Look at this Scotland defense, and the one thing that really stands out, because see, in the beginning of the season, they were playing very well, but their defensive line was led by Ty Parton, who really took over. Now, the linebackers, L.A., Sander right there, see Shannon Jones, they've really stepped it up, and they've become a part of this defense, along with their secondary. Short of the first down by the nose 
of the football. So they'll mark it. Just that much to go for a first down. We spent a lot of time with Ernie Stoughton over the last couple of weeks. Well, he's a football guy. Any time you can get with an old coach who's done the things that he's done, Pittsburgh Steelers, Hall of Famer, you know, been with the Cowboys, went to Super Bowls, he's done it all. That's a lot of fun. And Steve Pelour, who started the game three of four for the year. Third down, the length of the football to go for a first down for Frankfurt. Down seven to nothing. We're in the first quarter from Edinburgh. About a four-hour train ride north of London. And you see Pelour on the quarterback keeper. Take it near the first down at the 40-yard line. You know, this is one of those situations where Matt would say you're at the mercy of the referee's foot. If he stops with his left, you don't get it. If he stops with his right, he gets it. He must have stopped with his right foot. And he got it. And he got it. The Lures led a nice drive downfield, began about the 20-yard line, and now he's at the 40-yard line of Scotland with the first down and and play action on first down with the rush from the blind side. Hit as he throws and throws to Gary Hill. He's got the first down again at 17 to the 21. Nice play action. You know, what you're getting right now out of Frankfurt is what Steve Pelour can give you in this league, and hopefully what he hopes is international football. You see, what he does is he can settle people down and go back and rely on the experience. You're down 7 nothing. come out and take what that defense is giving you. You see, he sets his feet, he looks the defense over, pulls the safety over with the look, hits the out in front of the corner. Gary Harrell from the... New York Giants, first down, 10 yards to go from the 21, handoff. And they give it to Wes Bender. And Bender picks up about five yards to the 16, so they follow an 18-yard gain with the gain of five on a running play to West Bend. But I think what's catching me off guard, at least, in this Frankfurt offense has been they're running the football. And they have not been able to run at all. And I think now you, you get back, you get Bobby Phillips in, you start pounding the football, you get behind some of those Dallas Cowboy allocated players, Michael Batiste, 68, and 95 Heckman, you're starting to pick up some, some yardage. Frankfurt is in the white, orange, and purple, and here comes the blitz, and they go the end around to Kearney, and a block from Pelour will open him up. He's got to get inside the 10, and he does. Inside the 5, and a touchdown. <laughs> Tell you who made that whole play was Pelour. Great block. He did, he did the perfect thing. I mean, the defensive end got out there, contained the thing. Pelour made it, had to get him to the ground. He got his job done, and Kearney did the rest with his way. That's a lot to ask in this league for a 34-year-old quarterback who's trying to get a comeback in the NFL. That's a lot to ask for anybody over 30 <laughs> to go block a big old hog lineman. <laughs> that was a good drive. 11 plates. <laughs> Capping it a 16-yard end around to Jay Kearney from West Virginia. Number nine is Ralph Kleinman. That would be Herr Kleinman. Herr Kleinman. From the Cologne Crocodiles, an amateur team in Germany. Trying to tie the game at seven, which he does. We're tied at seven apiece, 8.33 remaining in the first quarter. So Steve Pelour on the end around to Jay Kearney. They get by Scotland, they tie it up at seven apiece. Kevin Harlan, first quarter, we're tied at seven. Ernie Stottner's team with a nice look at 11 play, six minute drive. And the big thing there is they're running the football. They can run the football effectively. They'll continue to move the ball all game long. There's the defense, which has been ranked number one most of the season, now down to number four. And Marcus Thomas, who recovered the fumble on the opening kickoff and returned to 24 yards for the touchdown, will be deep back as Ralph Kleinman will kick off from the 30. We're in the second quarter, and we're tied at seven, and Marcus Thomas into the sun from the five-yard line. The end around to Yo Murphy, and Murphy to the 20-yard line. Got to set that thing up. You know, the reason the reverse worked to Jay Kearney is because you set it up with running. You're going to take Phillips, you're going to run him this way. Watch the defense. Everybody starts to flow, and now you come back the other way. Once you get everybody flowing one way, that's when the reverses are affected. You see, nobody's over there, and then right there, David Webb, Steve Pelour takes him down. Heck, Collins is over there with a sign saying, run this way. 
<laughs> but it was because of the setup. It is. So the first time we take a look at the Scottish Claymore's offense, first down and 10 yards to go from the 20-yard line. And number 13 is Jim Ballard, who on first and 10 gets out of that pocket and nice. throws to the near side. Pass caught by the Kansas City Chiefs allocated player. Really turned out of Oregon. He stretches for a first down and a gain of 11 on first down for quarterback Jim Ballard, who played at Division Three Mount Union in Ohio. I like this kid. I think this kid has got a lot of courage. The cowardly line would love him. Why is a muskrat guard his must? Courage. Ballard's got it. <laughs> See, he's playing with a chip on his shoulder. He wants to prove that a, that a Division Three player can make it. And I'm watching this kid. He's got the size. He's got arm strength. He's got that awareness. He's got a little bit of cockiness. I think he's got a chance. And he's got a good arm, as we yeah, saw. Yeah, really Going against the grain from the 31, the pitch out to Siran Stacy, former Alabama player. Gene Stallings, and he is out to the 34 and picks up three on first down. Actually brought down by Tom Gavallo, who played at Louisville, number 53. Ballard took the place of Kansas City Chiefs allocated quarterback Steve Matthews, and Ballard has come in, and over the last 10 quarters, eight touchdowns, two interceptions. So in this game, we really have two of the hottest quarterbacks in the league right now. I think Ballard's made a difference with his offense. I think it's run better with him at quarterback. Quick throw, quick drop, nice catch. Sean LaChapelle out of UCLA, and he spins his way for a first down to the 45. Sean LaChapelle broke the record this year for receiving yards in a season for over a thousand and you think he can play in the league yeah i think he's got a chance I, I think he's got good hands he runs great routes he's a smart player he doesn't have great great breakaway speed but he gets in and out of his route so fast and it makes the difference we're tied at seven here late in the first quarter of play la chapelle comes in motion handoff again up the middle they go and siran stacy yeah i think right now what you've seen out of this scotland offense is exactly what you should see. Using the players that's gotten them there. You know, you got Ballard to come out and has a strong arm. Then you go to Saran Stacy, who's led the league two years, is a good football player. Throw the ball to La Chapelle. You got inside, you got the tight, you got Willie K. Boom, ball outside. So they move the ball around, but the main guys, Saran Stacy, La Chapelle, Ballard. Stacy is a legend in this league. All time leader in rushing yards and all purpose yards, now 28 years old. Second down, nice fake, a little pass by Ballard. He's overshooting. Stacy on the near side. He's complete. It'll be third down. I tell you, Saran Stacy is a player that was in the National Football League, second round pick for the Philadelphia Eagles out of Alabama. And you know, he got there and he just didn't quite fit. It just didn't quite make it. And he came over here and he really matured. The problem is he matured and he's 28 years old. He's a good football player. If he was 24, he'd get a shot back in the league, but I think because of his age, he won't. Again in Philadelphia back in 92. There's a third down now for quarterback Jim Ballard, who is hit and brought down a sack. Fumble. The play and a fumble on the play back at the 41, which is recovered by Scotland. The sack was by 90, Don Reynolds out of the University of Virginia. And that's his fifth sack of the season, and Ballard is forced to eat it, and the defensive Frankfurt forces the punt. Yeah, and Reynolds should turn around and kiss his defensive back because that was a coverage sack. Ballard had who he wanted, looked downfield, Coverage was there, couldn't go with it. Reynolds gets a sack. Punt now coming from Paul McCallum as a flag is thrown. It's a high hanging punt as Gary Harrell, the giant player on the 25, scooting up the middle and almost broke the frames out of the 38 yard line. We'd like to apologize to our audience. We're having some audio and technical problems here in Scotland, uh, which is now evening time. It is 6.33 in the evening. But we are uh, working to rectify those, so if you can remain patient with us, we will bring you nonetheless the pictures of this World Bowl 96. Penalty was on Frankfurt. As you get a good look at Steve Pallor, began with the Dallas Cowboys in 1984, and Bernie Stoughton was happy to see a rebirth of him. It's going to be interesting to see what they do. They sh Ordinarily, you'd want to kick this thing again because this field position is too good for Frankfurt. And it looks like that's what they're going to do. And the reason I... Offside! 
Defense, number 39. Five-yard penalty. Repeat fourth down. Have you listened to that official? He's not from Scotland. That's just a hunch. <laughs> I <laughs> yeah. The reason I said it is because Scotland has been having a lot of problems in special teams coverage. And in fact, they'd be getting hammered on them. They felt that that was going to be one of their keys was how well they covered Burrell in the return game. There's Gary Harrell and Paul McCallum, who played in the CFL for many years, is set to punt it away again and gets off a boomer. High floating punt, which Harrell will field at the 19 with a fair catch, and he's to the 20 yard line. That's big. He picked up 20 yards of field position there, so that's a good call. So we're tied at seven. We'll be back at the World Bowl here in Edinburgh, Scotland, after these messages from your local station. He's for late in the first quarter. All over the world, people watching this game. Global interest in American football is at an unprecedented level. Action seen in 171 countries today and throughout the season. And on first down, the national player from Germany, Ingo Seiber, bangs over the right side and takes it near the 27-yard line for a good pickup of seven on first down. I told you, I like that Seiber. He, he reminds me of Billy Ring from San Francisco a few years back. Who can do a lot of different things. Yeah, he catches the ball well. He'll block for you. He'll pick up, you know, four, five, six, seven yards, and he has his shot. And he's smart. Now, he'll run behind big George Hegman, allocated from the Cowboys. Brewer with a second down, two to go from his own 28. He'll go to the air on second down in short yardage, and he throws to his receiver, Mike Bellamy, incomplete. Threw it back with the coverage by linebacker Emmett Waldron. Emmett Waldron, with the ball for free. This is the play on, and watch George Hegman to the right side of the screen, 95. Now he's going to give the time for Bloor to find this thing. This ball should be caught. That's the second drop ball he's had today. Flores had dropped on him. But he's getting the time from that offensive line. I was just going to say, he's got time to look, doesn't he? Yeah. Third down and two. Lure from the shotgun, normally under center, and is brought down and gets away. Has to get to the 30 for a first down and slides. Head first big. to the 31 and gets it. Let's see the ball. Yeah, Joe O'Brien had him. O'Brien gets the corner, just gets to his feet, but this is what Pelor used to do. Watch number 90. He's working on Hegman. This time he beats Hegman to the top side, and this is what Pelor used to do so well with the Cowboys and the Chiefs. When he got in trouble, he could get out of it with his feet. First down and 10 is former Cowboy and Chiefs quarterback Steve Pelor, and also a stint with the Denver Broncos on first and 10, throws to the near side. And the catch was made by Tony Harrison out of Texas A&M. Another first down and a pickup of 12 through the air. And again, good time to throw the football. And that's the whole key. And you're going to give Pelor the time. He's going to eat you alive. And then even when you don't give him the time, heck, he beats you with his feet. They were afraid. I'm talking about Scotland now. They were afraid that if he got time... And then coupled with the running game, they thought they could take the running game away. But if he got time, he'd eat him up. 43, first and 10, they show blitz, and here they come with linebackers, and Seibert will get a block from number 20, Wes Bender, and bang his way over the left side near midfield. Bender's probably recognized as the best blocking back in the league. But I'm going to tell you who made the best block on that play. Bender got his kick out, but the guy who made that play, Jay Kearney, number 15. Now, Kearney comes in in a Z-short motion. They're going to run the crack. He's looking for the first guy to show. You can see him at the top of your screen. Bender kicks out, and then Seibert will just run up inside. Kearney takes away the force in George Coghill, the safety, 34. There's Kearney hoping to hang on to an NFL spot this summer. 200-pound wide receiver. Second down at about four. Seibert again. This time they send him up the middle, find the blocking of the guards, Terrell and Batiste. Seibert, by the way, for Coach Ernie Stauntner, led all national players this year with four touchdowns, rushing yards, and receiving. He did a lot of stuff, but there's that big Hageman you're talking about, 95. Yeah, and there's a guy the Dallas Cowboys allocated. They have him outside attack. Now, he's gotten better in a couple areas, but where he still needs to work is he gets a little lazy with his feet. Personally watching him, I would move him in at guard, and they keep him that big square 355 pound body moving people. Seibert for the first down to the 45. Well, he weighs, speaking of Eggman number 95, he weighs 350 pounds, so we know he can eat, but can he block? <laughs> well, here's the thing. All, he doesn't always 
get the great push inside. I think the funny thing with Hegeman, when I saw him at the beginning of the season, you know, William the Refrigerator Perry was over here, and they listed his weight at 350-ish. And he and George Hegeman were talking, and, and Fritz says to him, what do you weigh? He says 350. Fritz says, I'm going to have to change my story. <laughs> uh, first down and 10. Another sweep with the bender block, and this time the defense of the Scottish Claymores. Wow, just a gain of about two on the play, as you see some of the sights of this World Bowl. It is just absolutely embraced this beautiful community of Edinburgh, Scotland. Arnold L.A., number 56, who had so many great years at UCLA before breaking his leg. And a couple teams have taken a chance on L.A., Kansas City namely. New England in 93. Second down at nine. Pelour, and he's going deep, and he sees the New York Giant, Harrell, and it's incomplete. Out of bounds it goes. He was stride for stride with Forey Duckett out of Nevada, Reno. Now, this is the down that Ray Wilson, the defensive coordinator for Scotland, wanted to get him. They wanted to get him to third and long. What he wanted to do was start taking different things away from Plur. He wanted to show him what he thought he would get and then play something else. He thought, felt that they could win third down, they had a chance to win the football game. You played for Ray Wilson. And Ray Wilson is the only guy in the world to have a great cup ring, a Super Bowl ring, and a World Bowl ring. That's the end of the first quarter as we break away after one from Edinburgh, Scotland. Tied at seven, the Claymores in the Galaxy. Millen, Kevin Harlan, Murrayfield in Edinburgh, Scotland. Beautiful night. Approaching the hour is 7 o'clock here in Scotland. And the one see, they thing. don't have regular cheerleaders here, Matt. They got they got guys wearing skirts. What about that? <laughs> what? I, I got to get one of them for Matt, and I got to see him in a skirt. Well, you look. I saw yours. Yours looks good. Mine looks it's really good. Very nice. Thank yes. you. Thank you very much. We... We begin the second quarter with a tie game at seven apiece. World Bowl 96, the World Bowl, the World League, a joint venture with Fox Sports and the National Football League. And Steve Pallor, 39, nice gets it outside. And Arnold L.A., number 56, read it well and knocks it down. They got a punt. Okay, that's exactly what they wanted to do. They showed him one thing, gave him another. That time they faked the blitz inside. They went man everywhere else. And then... When Pelor looked downfield and saw a man, what he wanted to do was dump this thing off. Now watch L.A. right there. She's going to fake inside, and then Pelor looks downfield, dumps it outside. Boom, play is made. That's a big third down. Fury with the punt and That's retrieved at the one-yard line by Marcus Thomas. Now, sure, you let that, it go into the end zone. That is El Stupido because this is the world <laughs> we're not. We're not in Barcelona. I, well, I got to tell you, you set your feet on the 10-yard line. You let it go over your head. You don't field it on the one-yard line. 45-yard punt. And so now it's Scotland with their backs against the wall. We're tied at seven. We're back at the World Bowl after these messages from your local stations. Right. Mill and Kevin Harlan, the third member of our crew, is on the sideline. The all-pro from the Kansas City Chiefs, Bill Moss. Bill, good evening. Hey, Kevin, glad to join you guys, finally. You know, two things I find interesting down here is, one, yesterday James Fuller told us that special teams are going to be the key for Scotland. And ironically, in the first 11 seconds, they scored a touchdown off it. And two, Frankfurt Galaxy has run the ball more in the first quarter than they have in the last three ball games. I'm very impressed with what they're doing. Back up to you guys. Yeah, Bill, you should be impressed. You know, And I think where that translates is Frankfurt's held the ball in the first quarter for over 11 minutes. And they have not been able to do that. So Scotland begins at their one, first down and ten. And Siran Stacy from Alabama up to the five. And he picks up a couple yards right there. Scotland only hold, held the ball for three minutes and 47 seconds in that first quarter. Well, and the biggest difference, you know, that Bill told me they're running the football. Siran Stacy can run the football, and they will. Before this game is done, he's going to run the ball effectively. Scotland kicked off. Frankfurt fumbled the opening kickoff. It was returned by Scotland. 24 yards for a touchdown. They were quickly up 7-0. Then Pelour led a well-orchestrated six-minute drive and tied the game at seven with an end around. Ballard in the end zone throws it away. No one was open in a wise move. It'll be third down. I'll tell you what, Frankfurt's doing very well. They know who can hurt them. And what they're doing is they're taking La Chapelle and they're doubling him and then they're manning up Siran Stacy wherever he is. So closing out those strengths that you talked about back in the first Absolutely. Quarter. You have your big three guys who make plays. 
Now, it's going to fall on the shoulders of Ballard. If they're going to go back to throw, he's going to have to spread it around to the other receivers. That could mean Yo Murphy, who had a good game last week in Spain. Murphy, one of the top receivers in the league. He's out of the University of Idaho. Third down and long. They've got to get to the 12, and the pass is overthrown. In Looks like he got hurt. That's La Chapelle. At the and 23. It, yeah, it looked, like, it looked like in the middle of his route, he pulled up. Maybe, I don't know what, it looks like he pulled muscle or something. Groin or Tammy or something. He was running his route and all of a sudden he just kind of stumbled and fumbled and, and that was it. Let's look at it and see if we can pick it up. Well, the first thing you'll see is Ballard has the time, and that's a key. See right there, you see how he was running and he just kind of stumbled? UCLA's all-time wide receiver, Sean LaChapelle. That's a groin. Injury timeout. He's walked off the field. They tell us it's an ankle, and he's in the locker room right now getting a look at that. That is good news. And if you've got an ankle, you can doctor an ankle. If you do a groin, you can't doctor a groin. You're gone with a groin. Gary Harrell is deep back for the Galaxy. Is Scotland in the blue with the gray pants will kick off and McCallum with his second consecutive punt. Harrell's going to give him great field position inside the 35, inside the 30. And that's where Steve Kalor and the Frankfurt Galaxy will begin it. A punt of 34 yards with the return of 10 by Gary Harrell from the New York Giants. I like Gary Harrell. And he's one of those guys that I watched on tape and I thought and still feel that he's got a shot in the National Football League. Well, the World League and the NFL closely aligned, but there are some changes. For instance, you get four points for a kick, a field goal over 50 yards or more. One foot is only required from the receiver to make a completed catch. You get a uh, two-point deuce, as they call it here, on all extra point attempts. And there is a 35-second play clock, which does not stop, as it does in the NFL, to reset the ball. Then they start the clock. And Pelour on first and ten, a little bit wide, a little bit low, and... Incomplete. And I still haven't figured out why they spell defense with a C over here. I, just, I don't get it. Well, there are a lot of things over here you don't get. I, I've spent the last week with you. I understand you Including a good state. Yes. You know, that's the one thing over here, like they talk about that mad cow. I figured out what they've done. See, nobody has the English speak. You go to Scotland, they say it's from the Netherlands. You go to the Netherlands, they say it's from Spain. You go to Spain, they don't even have it. So you don't have no beef with the beef. That's exactly it. Second down and ten. Ballour. And going back to his receiver, and it's dropped at the two. And in the sides down the way, Mario Bailey out of the University of Washington. And that's that's that pattern. You know, they've been they, I saw him working on it and practice and talk to the coaches about it. And that's that fade stop. Well, it doesn't quite look like what the Dallas Cowboys run. <laughs> but watch Mario Bailey. He's going to be working on Forey Duckett. Get behind. Now you're using the sideline as your help. Now the ball is thrown behind. And what you're counting on is for the defender to take that extra step up the field. Then the receiver comes back and makes the play. Putting a third down team, third and... 10 for Pelour, who gets a block, oh, he's got whacked Hill. as he throws, and That's it's a fluttering oh! pass at the spot by Harrell, and he's down to the one! David Wilson would like to bite his hands off. Gary Harrell caught a ball that was floating down the middle and out-dueled everybody else, picks up 29. It's first down and goal to go, Frankfurt. So it's nice. It looked like Jeff Coat 99 put a shot on Pelour, and the ball fluttered. And then as the ball was hanging up there, the defender, David Wilson, 25, clearly had a shot at the ball and went up. And you know what he did? He mistimed his jump. He tried to catch that ball at the highest point. He did not get that done. Harrell makes the big play. So first and goal from the one. And Phillips, who is the allocated player from the Minnesota Vikings, hurdles no place and loses about a yard with a nice stop by number 90, Joe O'Brien. Yeah, that Joe O'Brien. You know, that guy cracks me up. Every time I see him, his whole world revolves around the Raiders. And you. <laughs> he loves the Raiders. That guy, Joe O'Brien, all he talks about is, you know, John Madden's Raiders and Tom Flory's Raiders. And tell me about how and what, what was Jim Plunkett like. And his whole world is the Raiders. 
second and goal. Phillips again got a block, and then the defense came through, and Mark Sander out of Louisville, number 54, made a big hit. He played for Howard Schnellenberger at Louisville, and that time he throws him for about a loss of a half yard. You know, you always judge the toughness of your defense in short yardage and goal line. You get good short yardage and goal line defense, good tough stuff, you're going to have itself a good tough defense. Which you enjoy. And this is it. This is big right here. I mean, third, you lay it on the line. Don't be surprised to see if Bloor use his feet to get himself out of trouble here. One is Harold. He's got four receivers deployed. And into the end zone, the pass oh, nice. is caught for the touchdown. Brought down by Mario Bailey, number 81 from the University of Washington. And they're going to get Bellamy, 84, I believe, for taunting. A flag was thrown after the catch, and Bellamy was there. And Bellamy has taken some pretty good hits himself already today. And it is against Frankfurt. But the touchdown stays. Touchdown stays. They'll move this thing back and become a field goal instead of an extra point. And hey, that was good football. See what they did. Penalize that 15 yards on the kickoff. Touchdown. Bailey by the one, number 81, who just caught that touchdown pass, also is the one who fumbled the opening kickoff, which Scotland returned 24 yards for the touchdown. So he comes back and strikes, 10-21 remaining here in the second quarter as Ralph Kleinman will try the extra point. There's a flag thrown, and they'll stop it right there. Frankfurt with Pelor, they motioned away. They left Bailey one-on-one. -on -one with James Williams, and they just rolled the dice. You just throw the ball up, it's either an incompletion or it's a, or it's a touchdown. You can do that when you know you're going to have man coverage. You can take your shot. There's Mario Bailey. Kleinman. Splits them, 14 to 7, Frankfurt. Frankfurt's won two consecutive games they've had to to stay alive, and they're in the World Bowl for a second consecutive year. Mario Bailey comes up with a two-yard touchdown catch, and puts his Galaxy on top by seven. Because the guy who makes that play right there, Kerry Elways, Richard Lewis. On top, 14 to 7 with Matt Millen and Bill Moss, Kevin Harlan, Edinburgh, Scotland, where it is just now 7 o'clock and stays light here until about midnight. We're so far north. A penalty on the kick, and it pushes it back now. The Rather, on the touchdown, pushes it back to the 15-yard line. They assist it with the taunting of one of the Frankfurt wide receivers. And the kick picked up. And Marcus Thomas from the 25 fakes the end around to Murphy, and Thomas running outside. He's to the 43, and then belts it there. Mark Byers from the 58 down. He played the UNLV. Let's take a look at another time at that touchdown. Uh, Blurt knows he has man coverage, so what he does is he sends everybody away, and he leaves Mario Bailey all by himself. You're going to watch the motion comes across. You see the defender. Now what that does is it leaves this whole half of the field free, and Mario Bailey is working on James Williams. Watch the difference in the play. Good defense here by Williams. Look when the ball, when the receiver looks. Did you see how Bailey got his body between the defender and the ball? That was the difference in the play. That's good football. Another possession for Scotland, the first half of the season champs, and on the 43-yard line, they begin at first down. And Ten yards to go. Siran Stacey brings it up the middle. He's had five 100-yard games this year, but that is only the ninth play in the first half run by the Scottish offense so far. Well, and that speaks volumes of the Galaxy's def uh, off their offensive line and, and their ability to control the football with the running game. That's been the biggest difference. And earlier on, we had not seen a lot of running by any of these teams in the regular year. Second down, eight to go from the 45. The pitch out. Stacy again got a block and moves on a fumble on oh. the play and it's recovered by Cavallo Frankfurt. Has it. Cavallo has the ball and he oh. may have fumbled it at the 45. There goes a flag. Uh, they may, well, I shouldn't guess. Saran Stacy is going to be guilty of the fumble because of his extra effort. And then the ball pops out. Tom Cavallo, 53, picks the thing up. And then he laterals it maybe forward. 
penalty is against Frankfurt and their defense. 65 again is Walt Coleman, an NFL referee. A lot of the referees, like the players, trying to make a good showing here so that they can move up the ladder and seniority for the first opening in the league. Well, remember, there's also a national referee as well. And there's An illegal the... forward pass yeah. during the return and the interception. Number 53, a five-yard penalty, and a first down. I think he was listening to me. They got Tom Cavallo. <laughs> And he tried to throw it to Kerr, defensive end number 66. So the Scottish Claymores on three offensive possessions today, punt, punt, and fumble. Frankfurt, this is their fourth possession right now in the previous three. Two touchdown passes and a punt. So Frankfurt will try to capitalize. They've got the ball at the 48-yard line. And Steve Poole will go over to the sideline as a timeout has been taken by the defense from Scotland. Fourteen to seven, Steve Pallor and the Frankfurt Galaxy leading in World Bowl '96. League wide is up over 20 percent this year, so this definitely is a success story with the. European interest in the National Football League. First down and ten, a fumble is given. Frankfurt the ball back. They lead it by seven. The pitch out to Cyber with the block. Oh, the nice and job, and Shannon Jones. Player. Did you see that play? I mean, that's the way you play defense. Shannon Jones out of USC, number that's 58. the second time that they've tried that play and the second time that Shannon Jones has lowered the boom. He reads this thing perfectly. Here comes the fullback. It just becomes mano a mano. Watch number 20, Wes Bender. And what's going to happen? Shannon Jones is going to drill him, take him right at the seam. Look at that. That's beautiful football. You don't get any better than that. You draw it up like that, you blow it up, and then you make the play. Two USC guys going out of head to head. Second down 11, and Pelour going deep, and he's got a receiver. Second play that Wilson should have made. David Wilson almost picked it off incomplete. It'll be third and long. That's the second play. Remember, earlier, Harrell makes the big play down the goal line. Wilson has it in his hands, missed jumps. And it come, turns eventually into a touchdown. This one is a, has a pick all over. He took his head off that thing before he took off and ran. Frankfurt with the ball in the white with the purple and orange, leading by seven. And you see some of their fans over 3,000 from Frankfurt. Lure from the gun. Three down to eleven. In chase. Good coverage. Throws it away. Smartly throws it away. We got all kinds of pressure up the middle. And number 70 is Jason Buck, the former Redskin, former Cincinnati Bengal, who came up and was leading the charge for Scotland. Well, what the key there was on Pelor was the coverage downfield. I mean, they, here's big Jason Buck. Has a 650-acre farm in Utah. Got a call the other day. Said, why don't you come over here and play some football? He thought it was one of his ranch hands. Hung up on him. <laughs> Kevin Fury to punt. And this is inside the 10 and alive inside the 5. And down at the 3. Down by Tony Harrison, number 2. It was touched, though, by a Frankfurt player at about the 11. So that's where they'll start it. They began last time at their one yard line. Now they begin at their 11 yard line. A number of NFL representatives here today. NFL President Neil Austrian and his wife Nancy are here. Steeler President Dan Rooney. His wife Pat have come here. Carl Peterson, the President and General Manager of the Kansas City Chiefs, is here. John Beek, the GM from the Broncos, he is here. Jim Ballard gets it again. First down and ten. They need to put together a good looking drive, and it begins on first and ten with the pitch out to Stacy, and he has no room to run and no room to hide on the wing. Seven. 
Offensive linemen seem to be very interesting. They have more allocated players, it seems, on the offensive line than any other position. Well, when I look at this league, the two areas that have really stood out have been the defensive backs and the offensive linemen. It seems to be a league to develop the offensive linemen. Because of the reps. Yeah, you just get more reps, you just get out there and do it. Second down and seven. Scott Cooper was 81 in motion, and the pass is caught. Tight end, Willie Toon, second catch today. First down, that is to the 30 yard line. You mentioned Scott Cooper, and the reason he's out there playing now, this is a national down. Every other down, you have to have at least one national player out there. And this is one of those sets of downs offensively. Watch the offensive line protection. Purvis Hunt, 79, working right there. And Keith Wagner allocated from the Redskins. And then Tate, the Kansas City Chief, just beats the coverage of Cecil Doggett. First down. At the 29. And Ballard throws. Yo Murphy the catch. And he's grabbed by Tom Cavallo. What you're getting out of this Scotland offense is patience. And I think that, you know, that's the big difference with this offense with Jim Bowles. He's a patient guy, but he'll look and take what he gives him. Bill Moss, what do you have? Guys, the story is on Sean LaChapelle. It's a twin injury. He has a rolled his ankle, the same ankle last week in Barcelona, and a pulled groin. Doesn't look like he's going to be back for the second half. That's it from down here. Yeah, thanks, Bill. You know, you're right. You can doctor an ankle, but you can forget about a groin. That just needs time. Third down, Stacy. Grabbed again by Cavallo, the leading tackler on this defense. Cavallo played at Louisville, 6'2", 240 pounds. And he's trying to make a name for himself so that someone will pick him up this summer in camp. Now, there's, there's a kid this league is about. There's Tom Cavallo. Now, the kid's a good tackler. He'll come up and whack it. He's an average reader. He needs to get better at reading. But what kills him is he can't flat out run. The National Football League now, defensively, you have to be able to run and cover. And that's what's holding Tom Cavallo back. Third down and a yard to go. They've got to get just near the 40. Ballard dumps it off. Stacy's got the catch, and he's got the first down, and he's to the 45. And I like Jim Ballard. I think he shows you something every week. Now, there, he's showing more of that patience we're talking about. You know, he's not so impatient that he's going to wait and try to force it. That time, he looked outside, pumped, didn't like what he saw, pulled it back down, boom, just hit it underneath, get the first down. I think this guy should be in a camp someplace because he showed me more than a lot of the teams that I've seen. Well, he was in Cincinnati last year, and he thinks he may go back to Cincinnati's camp this summer. First down and 10 from the 45. And a juggled handoff, and Stacy made what appeared to be about a two-yard gain into a five-yard gain as he crosses midfield. You know, it's funny about Ballard when you talk to the coaches about him. They said, you know, at the beginning of the season in training camp, he really played well. In fact, they thought he played well enough to earn the spot. And then they came out of training camp, and then what happened, Steve Matthews took over and started. And then Ballard was just driving himself crazy. And then all of a sudden, you know, in the middle of the, in May, he went and got married. He came back and said he's a different guy. He went back to the States and then came yeah, back. Yeah, he came back, got married, and he's a different guy. And now uh, they said it really agrees with him. More mature. Much Settled more down. Yeah. You know what happened? He went home and Mama said, look, you get back there and you play and don't you whine. And I don't want to hear about it. Kind of what our Mama's told us. <laughs> Same thing. And here we are in Scotland line. Aye! <laughs> We've been working on our accents, haven't we? Every time we do, the, the Scots around us roll their eyes. Gain of two by Siran Stacy. It'll be third down in about four. 14 to seven. Frankfurt with the lead. This is a big third down right here. Three and a half minutes to go. You're on the other side of the 50. You pick this up, you have a chance to tie this thing up. Ballard out of that pocket and being chased and throws and he almost throws it away. Almost picked off on the side by Chris Hall out of East Carolina. It's incomplete and they got a punt again. That one, he never saw Chris Hall. Hall just hung, and Ballard squares his shoulders, and as he's thrown, see, he expected Hall to continue to go. The ball was to Scotty Cooper. Hall had a perfect pick and dropped it. Four offensive possessions, three punts and a fumble. 
And here comes McCallum again out of the Canadian Football League, and Harrell will let it go inside the 10, wisely letting it go, but as you can see, it's down at the 9. What do you, the rule is anything inside the 10, you let go in. Yeah, you set your feet on the 10-yard line. Gary Harrell did it perfect right there. You set your feet on the 10-yard line. That ball goes over your head, you leave it alone. If it comes to you, it's close, you pick it, and take your shot. There's a whole new meaning to digging your heels in. Absolutely. There's Ernie Stutner. I think they're talking with Les Miller, the man there on the left of your screen who was at Kansas City and rumored to be going to Philadelphia to join uh, that crew and player personnel, but he runs the uh, football side of the World League. I'll tell you, the one thing that the states can learn from the Europe and WLAF is this crowd knows how to have a good time. <laughs> they do. The parties begin hours outside, much like our tailgate parties in the states. Just in 10 players, with the big sack recorded by Brian Toby, the allocated player from the Kansas City Chiefs. Again, you have to go back and thank your DB because this is a covered sack. Fuller had no place to throw this ball. Every place he wanted to look was gone. I want you to watch the coverage. Receiver here, we're here, and up top. And as this thing develops, Pallor will drop back and look, and there will be a perfect blanket back here. Nowhere to throw the football. Get your zone drops, get your push underneath. Nothing there. Kobe comes up, big sack. And up the middle. Getting that quarterback's face. Second down and a ton, and they get it out to the five-yard line with a quick run. I'll tell you what you've seen. Bobby Phillips carried it, number 30. Out of this Scotland defense has been some adjustments by Ray Wilsey, their defensive coordinator. And they came out, and they were running the football on him. They were gouging him, controlling the ball. And then, of course, that opened up the pass game. Now they've, been, they've tightened up their pass coverage. And they've taken away and tightened up their run defense up front. It's made a world of difference. That's nice adjustments by Wilson. What he's done, he's walked the safety up a couple times, taking some chances in the running game as you get the two-minute warning. Two-minute warning in the World Bowl. Know someone who never eats every morning. Frankfurt on top by seven. Late first half. Let's go back down to Bill Moss, who's with Carl Peterson, the president and general manager of the Kansas City Chiefs. Hey, thanks, guys. That's right. I'm here with the president of Kansas City Chiefs, Carl Peterson. And Carl, you hate to see Sean LaPel go down after such a great year he's had. Well, this is true. He's a fine player. He's had a great season, but I think he's got a great shot to make our football team in 1996. Carl, well, you got a few more guys on a member of the Claymores as well. We do. We've got five guys here, and we've got three others throughout the league. We really really believe, Bill, in the World League. You know, we've got seven guys on our current Kansas City Chiefs team that played in the World Bowl, in the World League. All right, great. Good luck this year, Carl. Okay, thank, thank you. you Thanks for joining us. Back up to you guys upstairs. Third down. And they've got to get to the 19. Lure with a little play action, and he looks down the oh, side, and he's got he the down. receiver. He had it. And it's incomplete downfield for Mario Bailey. He just took Bailey, and that was just a sprint. I mean, he just ran a straight up on James Williams. And all he was betting on was speed on speed and thinking that Bailey was going to beat Williams out of his break. And that's a hit or miss. They go with the play action, draw people up. You know you have man outside. They just take Bailey. You see, he's just running right by him. That ball's just a little shorter. That's 98 and out the gate. Fury the punt. Second consecutive, third of the first half. Marcus Thomas fumbles it again, and it's finally picked up. And with the ball, David Wilson. And Wilson gets the block, and he's still on his feet inside the 40 and to the 39-yard line. And that's a heads-up play. And that's also a pickup of about 15 yards from that fumble. Well, coming up at halftime, James Brown, Terry Bradshaw, Howie Long, John Madden will be in our Fox studio for an NFL preview and first half highlights from this World Bowl 96. Well, there's a guy down, looks like it's the punter, Kevin Ferry. The one thing about the punters over here, they get in on tackles. <laughs> We've seen more punters and more special teams kickers get involved in special teams tackles than we've ever seen. You know, as poorly 
as the first half has gone for Scotland. They're one play away from tying this thing up and and really taking kind of over what's going on in the first half. Because in the first quarter, they played horrible. I mean, they didn't have, they only had the ball for four minutes. They gave it up for 11 minutes. Fury is allocated by the Carolina Panthers to this World League. And he walks off a little slowly. Now watch number three. You see him, he's going to be right here. And he's the kicker. And, and that's the reason why kickers play with no awareness. <laughs> see, because they have no clue. They're just running down there. And it's not like they do it all the time. And now he's going down there, his job is to be the safety. But what he doesn't see is the guy looking for the safety in the ear holder. So Scotland will try to capitalize on some pretty good field position just before the half from the 39-yard line. First down and 10 yards to go for quarterback Jim Ballard. Going deep and he wants the quick hitter and he's... Oh! Receiver in the catch is made, Yo Murphy. That should be one. six. I don't think he was touched. I think Yo Murphy scored six, but they're going to mark him on the one-yard line. That's a huge play. That's even bigger because Ballard had somebody right in his face as that ball was let go. Say, I like this kid, Ballard. Watch Murphy. He's going to run the deep bait route. He's going to take him. Now break back to the inside. Ball is thrown. Now watch. See if he's touched before he gets into the end zone. There's a touch. That's a touchdown. Nobody touched down. Nobody touched him until he was in the end zone. That should have been six. As it is, they're marking it on the one-yard line. Now the front end of that play. Scotland. That's their second Ballard. team timeout. 40 second timeout. And Ballard saw it all the way, stayed with it, had pressure right in his face, and let that ball go. Murphy picks up 38 yards and a pinpoint pass from quarterback Jim Ballard. Ballard at the body of scheme was just getting lit up. Now watch how Murphy goes for that ball. Nobody touches him. He's touched there. That should be six points. I like the toughness of this kid. I like his mental approach. I like the way he approaches everything. 24 years old, a native of Ohio. Senior year at Mount Union in Ohio, Division Three school, threw for 73% completion. And he's done about the same since he's come off the bench late in the year, replacing Steve Matthews, and he's about 70, 73 and a half percent. Big, strong kid. He's accurate, and he's tough. I mean, you can't ask for more than that in a quarterback. You see some toughness right here. And he'll just stand in there and stays with it, knows he's going to get hit, and Reynolds hits him right in the kisser. Big completion. On the one, first and goal as they try to tie it up. Ron Dickerson comes toward you, number 23. Stacy just about fumbled it away. A flag is thrown, and he's to the two-yard line. Second time, Stacy has almost coughed it up. Yeah, they got to get that thing ironed out. I don't know what it is, whether he's hesitating or whether the quarterback's not getting the ball clean to hand it off. Whatever it is. Snap, number 72, five-yard penalty. Still first down. Please reset the clock to 102. Please reset the clock to 102. 72 is Randy Beerman out of Illinois. And Come on, defense. Come on. With the Green Bay Packers in their 94 camp. He weighs 320 pounds. This is a big front line, and they average about 3, 320 across the front. Well, I'm going to tell you something. This whole league has some monsters. I mean, we've seen some huge people over here. They're enjoying the food. Except the steak. Except the beef. <laughs> First and goal from the six. Ballard guns it up. Oh, yeah. And he's got the touchdown. Yo Murphy has it. Now that was a chance that Ballard took. He saw it and he put some mustard on that thing. And Murphy came down with six points. You lose your best player, La Chapelle, with a groin and an ankle. Somebody's got to step it up. Yo Murphy's stepping it up. And he's had a pretty good day. Hey, not bad. Three catches, 50 yards to score. Really, shouldn't even that one shouldn't even have mattered because he scored earlier, which they didn't call. Right. Gavin Hastings will miss the extra point wide right. So it is not a tie game. And Scotland trails by one. Hastings missed one last week in Barcelona. He's been having problems. 
Here's watch the Ballard. Again. Yeah, I want you to watch Ballard. Set his feet. Knows where he wants to go. Murphy works the defender. Chris Hall pushes him upfield. Hall makes a great... He gets a great break on that ball, but he never whips his head around. And because Ballard sees that, I mean, he puts some heat on this thing. Watch him. He sees it right away. Say, I like this kid. Look at this. He knows what he has. He's man up out there. This ball gets past Chris Hall before he can whip his head around, and Yo Murphy's in for six. And a nice adjustment by Murphy, too. Absolutely. That's good football. Mount Union. He said, I know I can play. All I want is a legitimate chance to play. Don't bring me into camp just to throw seven on seven and take up time. I want a shot. I'd give him a shot. And these players know that NFL general managers and scouts and coaches watch the tapes weekly of these games. Looking uh, to put together their 96 teams back in the States. And the kickoff returned by again. Mike Bellamy, and it's a loose ball. And that's that covered Scott by Scott at the 15 yard line. Second time on the kickoff that Frankfurt has fumbled the ball. One time returned for a touchdown. This may cost them a touchdown. That's Shannon Jones who got that one. Remember, I talked about not having the huge numbers on your roster, so your starters have to play special teams. Jones comes up with this one. Looked like the ball just came out of Bellamy's hand. It, it just popped loose. Then it bounced off a couple of people, and Shannon Jones comes up with it at the end. 48 seconds remaining in the first half. There's Shannon Jones, whose dad, Billy, played running back for the Kansas City Chiefs. I didn't know that. 15-yard line, first down and 10. Scotland trying to capitalize, trailing by one. Late in the first half and 48 seconds remaining. And a lot of movement. There go the flags and the whistles sound, and they'll stop it. Get a shot of that Prior to the snap, number 13, five-yard penalty, still first down. Yeah, this is a there's Mike Bellamy who fumbled the ball. But yeah, this is this is the national down, and that's indicated on the first down marker on the down marker they'll set a little sign on there and that indicates that there has to be a national player in this series first and 15 back at the 20 with the penalty Bell comes it again third catch today by tight end Willie T from the Kansas City Chiefs and he's to the 16 yard line Walk is at 37 seconds and ticket now you can see there it is right there See, and that indicates that there have to be national players on the field for that series of down. But what's been happening is some of the coaches have been kind of experimenting with that rule. They don't have the guy in there. <laughs> they don't. They say he's hurt, so he can't go out. And so what that means is all Americans would have to play. Second down, 11 ball, knocked down at the line of scrimmage. I think it was hit by Don Reynolds, number 90, who is recognized as maybe the best defensive lineman in this league. And he always gets a push up front, and he has a presence, of course, to knock the ball down. Usually what happens, when you're knocking the ball down at the line of scrimmage, it means you're not getting any kind of rush inside. But you do have the presence of mind to be able to get those hands up and knock it down. Ty Parton, the defensive lineman, for Scotland, who was hurt, was looked at as the best defensive lineman in the league. And since he's been hurt, Reynolds has kind of stepped it up. On the 16, third down and 11, trying to get in for more points. And into the end. Oh, Yo Murphy oh, has oh, a oh, touchdown. What Remember a now, catch! You only need one foot in in the World League, and that's exactly what he got in. And that is as good a catch as you'll see. Hey, I, I don't care if you gotta have no feet in. That <laughs> catch was a great one. I mean, that was a one-hander on a hot and spicy ball that was thrown out there. Yo, Murphy, just, boy, what a tremendous catch. That's great football. I don't care if that's Jerry Rice or Michael Irvin or anybody. Yo, Murphy just put on a clinic for that thing. But Jim Ballard knows where to throw that ball. Second consecutive touchdown catch by Murphy. And four catches on the day, and Ballard has been right on the money. And this ball is thrown to the outside. Watch Murphy at the top of your screen. Going to work the DB. 
Washington breaks him inside. Now he's going to take Chris Hall back outside. Hall goes for the ball. There's your mistake. Here's your opportunity. Watch this. Unbelievable. And that is a score. And he got, he actually got both feet inbound. But the question was right. whether he had control or not. There's the catch. There's the touch. That's great a great catch. That's a great catch. Yomer. He was with the BC Lions in the Canadian Football League out of Idaho. And he, like Ballard, trying to show what they can do in front of a worldwide audience tonight. Where the heck do you get a name like Yo Murphy? Well, the, the ironic thing is, his middle name isn't Yo as well, and he'd be Yo-Yo. <laughs> <laughs> Just like when he was out there playing in the park, and, Yo Murphy! That's right. right. His little sister couldn't say his proper name, which was Llewellyn. Llewellyn. And so she came up with Yo, and it stuck. And now Jim Ballard's just saying, Yo, Murphy, here, take it. Nice catch. Great catch. Jim Kreiner, who was an assistant at UCLA under Pepper Rogers, and Dick Vermeil has sent the play into his quarterback. They're going to try for two. They lead by five, and down he goes. And the ball is thrown away, incomplete, so wipe it away. And Scotland with eight seconds remaining in the first half, leading 19 to 14. So they're trying to get back on track. What they've done now is they missed two extra points, and they lead by five. Well, two consecutive times. The touchdown pass and then the two-point try. Frankfurt went with a blitz, which means you're having to man people up outside. Ballard recognized it the first time, found Yo Murphy, who makes the tremendous catch. Then the second time it worked, nobody was there in the man coverage. He had to throw it away. And the nice thing about what Scotland has done today is they have capitalized on the two turnovers by Frankfurt. Yeah, and I think they've kind of turned the corner in the middle of the second quarter defensively. I think Ray Wilsey, by walking that safety up, taking away the run game, making them have to beat them on third down, going with man coverage, done some blitzes, changed things up, that's made the difference. Paul McCallum will kick off, and there's number one, Gary Harrell. One of our Nighthawks, one of some 800 teams that consists of over 45,000 players that play amateur football here in New York. And Harold to the 30, back pedal to the 29, and that ends the first half. So Steve Pallor has got some catching up to do. He did not get the ball late in the second quarter, and Scotland takes advantage of a couple turnovers, and Yo Murphy with two touchdown catches. We're at the half. We're back at the World Bowl after these messages from your local station. Yes, John, Howie, Terry, JB, the score at halftime. Yep, Terry's called it. At the half, Scotland leads it 19-14 over the Galaxy. Let's go to our highlights. Excitement. Hey, guys, Claymore fans are fired up. There's Sir Rand Stacy, leading rusher in the World League, coming out thinking the Galaxy says, hey, we're going to take you twice. Opening kickoff, Mario Bailey takes the ball, and he will head straight up the field. JB, check it out. Up the field. I, I said up the field. No, there's the hit by George Coghill. Marcus Thomas picks the ball out of there. He rumbles for a touchdown, and the Claymores are up by seven. Back comes Jay Kearney on a reverse from a handoff from Pelour, who also throws a key block, 16-yard touchdown. Seven all, we're tied. Now, deep down the field. There it is. Yo, Murphy, 38-yard reception. <laughs> he also, Yo, Murphy makes the TD reception. And now back come the Frankfurt Galaxies. There's the fumble. This all happens in a minute and 30 seconds. Claymores have it. Now back down, Mo Murphy to the post, to the corner, John. There it is, ball up in the air. Yo, Murphy, touchdown. There we go, extra point, 19 to 14, went for two, didn't make it, and the Claymores, hard to beat them when you're playing at home. You know what I mean, JB? They shortened that name up for you, didn't they? Hey, honest to God, that's his name. Yo, Yo Murphy. Murphy. Let's go to the coach and ask him, what did you like about the first half? Well, you know, I was, I was impressed with the feeling. You know, you could feel that, that this is a championship game. And I was impressed with Jim Ballard there at the end, the way that he stood in there, because that one he threw to Yo Murphy, he really took a shot. The thing that is disappointing to me is, is the tackling. I mean, the fundamentals are not good. There was as many missed tackles in that first half as I've seen in a long time. 
Yeah, and t the intensity in the game lends to, number one, it's a championship game. Number two, this is their last shot at impressing NFL scouts. And these are the guys that teams are going to be able to fit into the cap. Yo Murphy, we're looking for Sean LaChapelle. He pulls a groin. I think he's done enough during the season to impress Kansas City. But Yo Murphy has stepped up all of a sudden with two touchdowns. And you're right quarterback has played well. Hung in there on that big TD deep. Yeah, Matt, and what was that? Was Matt, that an out post corner? That was a post corner, the cor and then the corner came up or Thank whatever. Thank God, Bianca Batuka's not and playing if you're ever, game. Yeah, If you're ever in trouble, you always look for Yo Murphy. Yo, <laughs> Murphy. That's one Yo run the post. <laughs> they got, they've got John yeah, Madden know. in the zoo as well. Unbelievable. Hey, folks, football stateside preseason variety gets underway August the 10th right here on Fox San Diego and San Francisco, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on Fox, back with more halftime after this. As you look at the numbers right now, it's running the football. When they were running the ball effectively, Steve Pallor had those eight completions. Since they've been able to take that run away and turn it into a one-sided thing, they've been able to force him into a couple throws that he didn't want and also a sack. That is about as authentic as you get. <laughs> Let's take a look at some of the first half numbers here in beautiful Edinburgh. Well, you can see the biggest thing is it's highlighted over there for the Claymores, the 13 points off the turnover. They started the game with six off of a fumble, and then later on, the fumble by Mario or Mike Bellamy turned into another Jim Ballard touchdown to Yo Murphy. Time of possession is kind of evened up. And we go back downstairs to Bill Moss. Guys, Sean LaChapelle is definitely out of the game, and that's going to be a big factor for him. You know, you saw they got Yo Murphy into the game plan, but now they're going to, Frankfurt is going to take him out of it. Watch him to get the ball to the backs out of the backfield, and also tight end Willie Tate. Back up to you. And Tate's already had a big day with three catches. And what that does, really, if they're going to try to take Yo Murphy out, that means that they're going to have to have more patience from the quarterback position. Because if they're going to make a definitive effort, to take one receiver away, it's going to have to open somebody else. And it will be up to Ballard to find them. Kleiman set to kick it off for Frankfurt. Deep back. Marcus Thomas. Leo Murphy. And Thomas, who is their primary returner from the 15-yard line. A block for Murphy, and now he'll get another block and take it across field. He's outside the 25 by the 30s and near the 38-yard line. Pretty good return, a nice beginning field position for Coach Jim Price. 23-yard return. First down and 10 from the 38-yard line. The Claymore, by the way, is that short sword you see on the side of their helmet. In fact, you've kind of a history buff yourself, and you were telling me that that was used in hand-to-hand -hand combat. That was a hand-to-hand -hand, an artillery sword, actually. Uh, originally from the Roman, Roman Empire. The short sword. My son collected. I'm impressed. Well, with your son and with you. You wouldn't be when he starts hitting you with him. <laughs> First down and 10 from the 38-yard line. Siran Stacy fumbles for a third time, and he covers this back at the 30, and they lose seven yards. You know, it's funny, you see Saran Stacy in a game like this, and they said he's the difference with his leadership, and he'd be able to, you know, contribute in the running game and all this stuff. But the thing is, in the States, when he was with Philadelphia, one of the knocks on him was that he didn't hold on to the ball. And he had gotten over that fumble bug, but today it's been him three times with You don't know if he's going to make it back in. What did you say? He's going to be 28 years old in a couple of weeks. Age is a big factor with Saran Stacy. Loss of six, second down and 16. They bring all front four into the face of Ballard, who throws out of bounds and incomplete. They miss La Chapelle. Well, they do. I mean, you're always going to miss you know, the MVP of the league in the offense. Of course you're going to. And then when he's such a big part of this offense, but I think one of the things is, is he's taken a lesser role since Ballard has come on because Ballard will find other people. Like Yo Murphy. Like Yo Murphy, and that time he's looking to Scott Cooper. Scott Cooper, a national player, who defended his thesis and is now has his doctorate in polymer chemistry. In what? 
I don't know what it means, <laughs> but I know it's impressive. And he does, and he got his Ph.D. Third and 16. He's going for Cooper again. And Cooper, the national player from Finland, makes the grab at the 47-yard line. Scott Cooper. This, I'll tell you, this kid here has gotten better and better as the year has gone on. Watching the beginning of the season. See number 81. He's gotten to the point where he's a major contributor and can be counted on in this offense. Very bright guy. He's developed pretty good hands. Short of the first down, they got a punt on fourth down. It's inside the 20. And Harrell will let it go down, and it's finally touched by the Claymore's 38-yard punt. Frankfurt will get it for the first time in the second half, and that means Steve Poole. The field today is a wide receiver who played some amateur football in Glasgow, and he's also out there with Gavin Hastings from Edinburgh, Paul McCallum from the Canadian Football League and representing the country of Canada, and Ben Torriero from Edinburgh. Those are the Claymore national players. Most of the national players in this league will be kickers or punters because of the great soccer heritage over here. And there's Steve Pallor of Frankfurt. And Frankfurt's got their share, including Ingo Seibert, who played for the Munich Cowboys. And Draver from Dusseldorf, Oliver Quas from Munich, Cologne kicker Daniel Kerner. A well represented group from the country of Germany. First down in 10. Seibert makes the run over the tackle and he's out to about the 20 yard line. Gains about five. Now there are rules too which accompany these national players. Gotta have seven on your team. They must be in there for every other series. Must be on the field for special teams play. That's why you see so many in the kicking aspect of the game. But there are rules which accompany having these nationals on your team. A lot of teams think of them as a liability. Most, though, think of them as a huge asset. Cyber. Nowhere to run that time, and he's down at the 18 yard line. There's Joe O'Brien, that red guy. I talked to him the other day, Jason Buck, who played with me with the Washington Redskins. I said, Matt, I have to talk to you about this guy, Joe O'Brien. He lives and breathes the Raiders. That's all he talks about. All he wants to do is have a shot to play for the Oakland Raiders. He said he doesn't care what he does. Snap, defense, anything. I'll do anything. Walks around with that silver and black hat constantly. Last year, he was in the Vikings camp up in Mankato. Third down. Eight to go. The pass is caught. He's got to get to the 25, and he gets to the 21. That was made by Mario Bale. Nice defense by James Williams, 22. They got a punt on fourth down. That's good defense. Hey, Any time you stop the first, you win. You're going to watch as he's looking back inside. Here comes James Williams, 22. Watch him breaking the ball. Now Bailey comes back and makes the catch. Now you hold on, and you make the tackle. You make the tackle, force the punt, you win. Third consecutive punt for Fury. Marcus Thomas to the 30-yard line, and he's got some room to go. And finally brought down by Frankfurt's Hillary Button, who's a linebacker, and back downstairs to Bill Moss. Hey, guys, Jim Ballard just had to switch helmets because his earpiece seemed to be misfunctioning some way. So they took off another helmet, put a new face mask on, and he's back into the game with someone else's helmet. So we'll be keeping an eye on that see if he can hear. Rules are the same, and they use the same radio communication in the helmets. And remember the rule, if, if his radio communicator does not work, and then Pallor has to not have to use his as well. He better hope he didn't pick up one of those big old buckethead lineman helmets. So that thing will be <laughs> flopping all over the place. There's down and 10 from the 37. First down and 10. 19, 14. Claymore is the team with the ball, leading by five. A little play action. A little waggle by the quarterback, and he gets the pass out to the tight end, Willie Ted. He fumbles the ball, and it's picked up by Cooper, the national player, and he takes it all the way to the 36-yard line. Scott Cooper had been running a deep end to clear out that area. 
And then as they ran Willie Tate across the field, Cooper was still behind him. You're going to watch this Cooper, 85, is going to stay inside. Now you dump back outside. To the top, you see Cooper at the top of the screen. He was trying to clear out that quadrant. Ball pops up. Cooper's right there because he's doing the right thing coming back to the ball. Now, I like this kid. I think he's one of those players that's never going to hurt you. He's a smart kid, tries hard, gives you a lot of effort all the time. In fact, he's there all the time as your national starter in the series. Siran Stacy on first and 10 is inside the 30 on a gain of 6 to the 29. And see, that was a perfect shot of why Cooper is invaluable. Now, he grasped the game. He's playing club football over here. And he's not afraid to do anything you ask him. He'll play special teams. He'll block when you have to. That time, he gave Saran Stacy a block and enabled them to pick up seven yards. And he's smart. Smart kid. PhD we talked about. During the season, he had to defend his thesis. Second down, three to go. Stacy for the first down inside the 25. I'll tell you how smart. Scott Cooper is. Jim, Jim Kreiner says, oh, I love that Scott Cooper. Everybody on everybody the team likes him. He's one of the team. They accepted him. He said, in fact, I liked him so much in his work ethic. I came up to him and said, Scott, how would it be if we put you on the kickoff team? What do you think? He says, I think the other team would score. <laughs> so he's smart enough to know what he he's can honest. do either. He's honest. First and 10, 25. Stacy again. Other running play. And just a couple yards. Gets the call again, so we Stacy for another couple. Jim Kreiner. Well, the patience is what you're seeing from Jim Kreiner and his offensive staff along with Ballard. And there's one thing to talk about patience and having it called the game that way, but there's another thing about being on the field and actually doing it. And I think that says good things about Jim Ballard. The graphic said some not so nice things about Siran Stacy. Three fumbles, two which have been recovered, and Ballard was hit as he threw. They got great pressure on him that time. Ron Wolfork was there. He's out of Colorado, number 59. And again, there's Don Reynolds out of Virginia, already a sack today, and he was right in the face of quarterback Jim and Reynolds Ballard. has been getting a push up front. I mean, he's been working right inside. You can see he gets up. Not a great collapse pocket, but he has the presence to get those hands up. Same thing we saw earlier. Third down and a long eight. Another play action by the quarterback. He looks for Stacy downfield and can't find him, and he is finally found by Fred Foggy. Who is out of the University of Minnesota, number 36, and he lassoes Ballard and rides him out of bounds. Now, Gavin Hastings is a national hero here. He's coming in. Oh, this is Paul McCallum. I thought it was 15. McCall McCallum, the kicker. Out of Canada, we'll try one from 30, 36 yards. First field goal attempt today, and this kick is good. And Scotland extends their lead. There is a flag down on the field. Yeah, so we'll wait and get the determination on that. But if it's Ooh. against, oh, and it's against Scotland. That's a big one, too. Everybody's high five at Lance Gunn over there at 39. He must have come off the corner and somebody hooked him. A referee Walt Coleman from the NFL. Holding. Number 59. 10-yard penalty. Repeat fourth down. Now it's a 46-yard attempt. And they caught David Webb, 59, off the corner. Watch the left side of your screen. You're going to see David Webb, number 59. And he's going to be working off those two guys off the corner. But what happens is you have to time that. So you push inside and then outside. He got that left hand hooked. So on the Willie Tate hole, oh, the kick, kick is good from 36 yards away by Paul McCallum. Man, he killed that sucker. He had another 20 yards in that thing. Interestingly enough, he kicked a 46-yard field goal earlier in the season. McCallum did to beat Frankfurt for Scotland. He's just given him a nice 22 to 14 lead. Shutting out Frankfurt's supernova offense. Jim Kreiner's squad celebrated the World Bowl birth with a 20-0 victory. The 
Galaxy look for revenge week seven in Scotland with less than a minute left. They tied it at 17, but with one second on the clock, Paul McCallum kicked the game-winning 46-yard field goal. And McCallum just kicked another 46-yard field goal with 8.14 remaining in the third quarter. He's just put Scotland on top, 22 to 14. And the kickoff, Bellamy from the 16-yard line. And he runs into a oncoming tackler, got a block, and now will take it across the field. Finally, he down at the 26. You see that little switch right there in special team thinking? That was good thinking. They took Gavin Hastings that time. They tried to kick it away from Harrell and kick it to Bellamy and then try to corner him on the side so he doesn't give him anything to run. This is Gavin Hastings, rugby national hero here. I think Bill Moss kind of put it put it best yesterday. He said, you take your best rugby player and you turn him into a kicker. What kind of a game is rugby? <laughs> what kind of a kicker is it? He has struggled. First down and 10 from the 26-yard line. Here's Steve Pallor. Pretty good time this time, and he's got to get out of the pocket. And look downfield, and he throws a pass caught by Bailey. He's got the first down to the 48-yard line of Scotland. Boy, that's Pullor, but that is very nice. Pullor bought some time. He rolls back outside, and Mario Bailey, who's a he's a tough guy. I mean, he's just a good football player. He's going to break down. There's coverage on the outside. Pallor is going to see that the corner falls down. Bailey rolls back to the inside where no one is. Williams recovers and makes the play, but not before he gets the first down. To the 47. And on first and 10 to run to the 45. So we talked about tough guys. One of the tough guys I've seen while I've been here in Scotland is Bill Moss. I mean, how about that stuff he was eating yesterday? And he's the only guy well, I've look ever seen who has baked beans and eggs for breakfast. And then he would try anything. I mean, they had that little hockey puck thing there. I don't know what they call it. They told us it was black pudding. It turns out it was boiled down blood. He loved it. Cow blood. They boiled down bo uh, wolf blood. You know what? And I know after a Scottish breakfast, why they wear kilts now. You, you get all that gas going down in there, geez, you have that kilt. <laughs> Spoken like a true lineman. Second down eight, and Bellamy comes up with a big catch at the 31-yard line. Here's what it looks like. That black stuff there, that's, Look at that's that bite. the bull's blood. See that bite? He took a bite of that bull's blood, and he loved it. And then he said, hey, this stuff is really good, guys. What, what about those beans? They eat beans here 24 hours a day. <laughs> you know, know what the, the deal is? <laughs> the deal is it gives me so much hot air that I can compete with you guys up there. <laughs> okay, well. I needed supplements. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know you were regular. I know that for sure. Well, that was a tough guy for you. Played in the middle of that Kansas City defense. All pro. Well, he would knock you out any chance he had. Play clock is at six. Ballou is faced with the first and ten from the 32-yard line. And looking for Bailey. Oh, what a catch. And it is a That's good. touchdown. Yes, sir. Boy, they found Mario Bailey in a hurry. He has been the whole offense here in this third quarter. Went right down the field in this series. He's not a big guy. 165, 170 pounds. He can run 5'9, but he's tough. And he wants the ball. Now the Galaxy is down by two, and we'll see if they'll try to go for the two-point conversion and tie the game as Which Steve they will. will stay in the game, and that's exactly what they'll do. And so the offense shows a little bit of life after having to punt it away three consecutive times and being absolutely dead. But notice how they've done it. They got rid of the run game. They've just started airing it out. We will try for the two-point conversion. He's deployed two receivers to the bottom of your screen. Here they got a motion. Lure on the two-point conversion, and it's almost picked off and incomplete. Well, they got some pressure. See what they tried to do. They tried to go on the two-point conversion. They tried to go with a pick and get Bellamy back un underneath. The touchdown, though, this was all Mario Bailey. 
Watch Pelor sees him, knows he has a man up, throws that ball deep over the shoulder catch. Watch the concentration, fingertips, one foot is in, that's all that's required, and that's six. We have seen some great catches today. Really have. Now, this one would not have worked in the NFL, but watch the Willie Mays over the shoulder catch. Look at this. That's beautiful. One foot was in, one foot was out. You need one in this league. He beats Fuller at six points. Mario Bailey today, four catches, two touchdowns. And he brings the Galaxy to within two with that long 32-yard touchdown reception. Now, on the two-point conversion, they tried to go with the pick between Bellamy and Kearney. And it's going to be coming into the bottom right hand of your screen, but because of the pressure and Arnold L.A. sitting in the middle, it goes for naught. Climb in to kick off. Marcus Thomas is deep back with Yo Murphy. And this will be Yo Murphy from the 16-yard line. He's caught two touchdown passes today. He's over the 28-yard line. Where the Scotland team will have it first down and 10. You know, Kevin, I can't tell you how much I'm impressed with the crowd over here. They've got over 40,000. They're really into it. They understand the game, and I think that's the biggest difference in the last three years is this crowd has really become educated with American football. And these people know how to have fun at games. There's confetti and dance and in flag waving and singing and songs and men in skirts and all, there's all kinds of stuff over here. I want to see you in your skirts. Believe me, you'll never see it. <laughs> it has definitely been a very strong season of success for the World League of American Football this year. First and ten, Ballard right to work and he's got a receiver. That's it. Yeah, Murphy, he's got a touchdown, his third of the day. Chappelle could not be happier for Yo Murphy. We talked about it earlier. Somebody was going to have to step up. Who is it going to be? Yo Murphy said me. Third touchdown of the day. This one, he just uses speed. Ballard throws the ball perfectly. Catches in stride up the sideline. Touchdown. 71 yards on the touchdown catch. Murphy, his third touchdown reception today. 131 yards receiving total for Murphy. And the extra point by Hastings, and it is no good. His second miss in as many tries. This is the extra point. Jim Ballard did not miss on Yo Murphy. A World Bowl record 137 yards for Yo Murphy. This one puts the Claymores up by eight. Some athletes are born great, and some athletes are forced into greatness by 50,000 screaming maniacs who are not going to take no for an answer. Hey, you're a guy, and guys want to be cool. Hang out with other guys who are cool, but even cool guys sweat. 40% more than women in three touchdown catches today. But the last one of 71 yards, as pretty as you'll see. Well, what you're going to see is you watch him work in his zone, and he gets Cecil Doggett to bite. See, Doggett is looking back inside. You can't do that. I mean, you're in your zone. You settle down. Now you play with awareness. There's only one guy who can hurt you, and that's Murphy. But because he whips around, bites, Murphy gets back outside. 71 yards later, it's gone. And here's Jim Ballard, who has set a single-game World Bowl record with his performance today. He is 12 of 19. Last week, he was 22 of 27. He has put in three absolutely unbelievable games. All he wanted was a chance. He may have just gotten his chance in the NFL as Gary Harrell inside the 10 will bring it upfield for Frankfurt, and there he goes. Harrell by the 35. -yard line. And World Bowl records for Yo Murphy. Three touchdowns, 137 yards. 
and that one was a nice catch from 71, most of the run, but his one-hander before the half was awesome. <laughs> that was one of those things that you do when you were a kid and you just kind of walk around and say, yeah, I did it. Is ugly, isn't it? They're doing the twist over here in Scotland. They're only about 25 years behind. Yeah. But they're doing it. And the handoff went to Seibert. He was lassoed and brought down by Simon. Moke Simon, number 69, was just signed this past week. Joined the team on Wednesday, and he makes a tackle in the World Bowl on Sunday. Not in a long time. Under five to play in the third quarter. Lure from the shotgun going deep, looking for Harrell, and he's double teamed in the pass. It's a little overthrown. Well, they have, when they've gone deep, they've tried to get to David Wilson. And Mario Bailey ran by coverage to go. This time they went right at Wilson with Harrell, and he just ran right by him. But Pelour has not been able to connect on that deep ball. Frankfurt Galaxy is a 6-10. Lure is passing today. He's had a couple touchdown passes. One. That's a couple over here. The exchange yeah. rate isn't That's, very well, good. Well, you know, time zone change. <laughs> By the time they see it, you know, you'll have thrown another one. Frankfurt on third down today is 6-10. They got a third down and nine. And There's down goes Pelour. And he's brought down by Joe O'Brien, the Raider wannabe. <laughs> hey, he does play hard. That's, he's never going to be a great player, but he's always going to give you everything he has. And today he has played very hard over there. Kind of a sawed-off guy, not real big. You're going to watch. They're going to run the stunt. Jason Buck inside. Out comes O'Brien around the corner. Once he gets it, the old punch into the air, and he's got himself a, got himself a sack. That 248 is wrong. He's about 265. The punt, and here comes Marcus Thomas. And he is out to the 40 yard line. Well, I was right on Kalur. He does have two touchdown passes today. One to Bailey for two yards. And then to Bailey again for 32 yards. I knew that. So they kept changing the exchange right there, but the puller does indeed have two touchdown passes today. I knew I read that someplace. Yeah, well, you read it on my sheet. Well, yeah, you wrote it down, and then I read it. <laughs> <laughs> now that's the way kilts are supposed to look. Instead of those hairy legs that it I've been looking at. It does not look that way on you. It never, you'll never <laughs> see one on me, believe me. <laughs> the Claymores with the ball, lead by eight, 28 to 20. We're down under four minutes to play in the third quarter, and Siran Stacy, one time second round pick by the Philadelphia Eagles, and Buddy Ryan is to the 41 yard line and picks up about a yard. Some of these allocated players have been putting in a pretty good year. One of them, Wagner, the right offensive tackle, number 78. Playing pretty well. Got his, uh, gets his hands up, got great feet. He's really got to learn how to punch with those hands. But he's been playing well. Has not been getting any pressure over that side. He's going to go to the Redskins camp this summer. Second down, a long nine. Ballard in trouble, and Ballard brought down. Sacked right. down the play by Mike Kerr out of the University of Florida, number 66. I think I just jinxed Wagner. <laughs> just as I've been saying, they've been getting no pressure over there. Kerr beats Wagner for the sack. Wagner's with the Redskins, Purvis Hunt, Zeno, and Bart, all linemen on there. Bart with the Chiefs, Zeno with the Rams, and Hunt, as well as Wagner, going to the Redskins for Coach Norm Turner. That time he was fine, and he got pushed upfield, and Kerr spun back inside and beat him. Third down and 13. 
And the catch made by your man. He's got the first down to the 48 yard line. Rockford, boy, he took a wicked hit after the play. Boy, he sure did. And the receiving end of a huge hit. Now, let's see where he's the ball. That could be good. Keith Wagner, you see from the sideline. Me. Dowd will get this ball out because of the protection up front, and Murphy just slides right in between. And then Johnny Dixon, I think he really whacked his own guy there. More than Murphy. So, Murphy is up, and a player for the Galaxy is down at the 50-yard line. They can't afford to lose another receiver. Speaking of Scotland, they've already lost Sean LaChapelle, who is the MVP of the league, and Murphy has had a record-breaking day today, and there you see Ernie Stuntner looking down at one of his fallen troops at the 50-yard line. Ballard has been getting the time to throw. Johnny Dixon, 42, comes in. The guy he hit really is Cecil Dog, and that's who's down. There's the ball. Here comes Dixon. Hit him right in the chest. Doggett is from West Virginia, and he is slow to get up. Good news is he's on his feet. The bad news is he thinks he's in Franklin. <laughs> well, he's going to be all right, and that's one of the tough things in this game. I mean, there's some tough hitting out there, and that's part of it. When you when you walk on the field, you know it's there. And you play hard anyway. There's Yo Murphy, and he's being attended to on the sideline. They're running out of bodies. Injuries are a big factor over here. You can't as easily replace players over here as you can back in the States. First down and 10 because of Murphy's catch. He's inside the 49-yard line. And they blow that play dead. Now they got to get somebody moving inside. Either Zeno or Barnes moved for Scotland. Zeno. That was Zeno. The center, he had a block back, and what they get a jump on him. I think we had some Zeno sometime this week, didn't we? Uh, whatever that is. That offensive line's done a pretty good job up there protecting Ballard. Penalty of five yards. First and 15. Push it back to the 46. Misdirection, Stacy inside the 45 and pushing ahead near the 41. That's a pickup of 14 yards. Well, you got Saran Stacy. All he's doing is he's following Wagner and Purvis Hunt. Watch big 79, 78, right side of your screen. There's the block by Wagner. There's a nice block up there by the fullback. And then Purvis Hunt flattens out everybody. How about that Purvis Hunt, number 79, came into camp. Weighed 383 pounds, but he says he's in good shape. He lost 43 pounds. He's down to 340. <laughs> Second down and two to go in the handoff again. Siran Stacy. Not get it. The 40 with the yard remaining. Third and one with about one minute remaining in the third quarter. Team with the ball, Scotland on top, 28 to 20. The weather is absolutely. Picture perfect in Scotland. It's about 68 degrees. There's sun. There's no wind. And normally it's misty and a little chilly and a little rainy. Third in the body yard. The pitch out. And here oh. Stacy who cuts inside. I'll tell you who made a great block in that play is Scott Cooper. Scott who was in motion. Who came in short motion and got his kickout block. I mean, he's just a wisp of a guy, not very big. Stacy just cut off that skinny little rear end, went right back inside and picked up the first down. That's a big block by Scott Cooper. Third quarter winding up here at Edinburgh. Saran Stacy has rushed for 53 yards. So he's beginning to pick up his momentum. The Claymore is on top, 28 to 20. Now this word from your local stations. I like Scotty Goofy. He's 165 pounds, soaking wet with a rock in his hand. Watch number 81. 
He goes right after Bernard Carter. He's getting a little help from Willie Tate, but he knows he got the first one. Now he throws himself back inside to keep on helping. I mean, that's what this league is all about. And that's how you play the game. I mean, you play it the best you can. You don't have to be the greatest. You just have to give your best. And that's why Scott Cooper has done well. It's funny, you know, he's defended his thesis. He has his doctorate in chemistry. And he says, I have much more fun being an athlete than I ever do being an academic. We begin the fourth quarter. With the team with the ball, the Scottish Claymore is leading by eight. They got it first down and 10 from the 36 yard line and a quick handoff and there's nowhere to go for Siran Stacy. No game, second down and 10 downstairs to Bill Monks. Hi guys, standing with me is President of NFL, Neil Austin. Neil, you have to be happy about the turnout of the crowd. This is extraordinary. We've got over 40,000 people here and the amazing thing is they know football and they know when to cheer, they know when not to cheer and I think this is going to be a real turnaround event for us here in the World League. What can we expect from the NFL and the World League in the upcoming years? I think you're going to see us continue with what we've got now. Six teams next year, hopefully expand by two in the following years. And then we'll just have to wait and see. Thank you, Neil. Congratulations on the successful World League. Back up to you guys. Second down, 11, and Ballard gets away from one. That's Cavallo. And he throws it away wisely, incomplete. Third and 11. That's a nice play right there by Jim Ballard. Ballard able to shake the first guy in Cavallo and then has a presence to throw it out of bounds and avoid that sets up third down. And I think this is the maturity that he's gained while he's been over here. And that's what this league was designed to do. And now you have the presence. You get out of it, set down, find your receiver, throw it out of bounds. Yeah, you take a hit to the chops, but that's part of the game. Scotland 4 of 9 on third downs, and they've got a third down and 11. A play action by Ballard, who's going to go to the far side. <laughs> it's fun, but is it enough for the first down? He's right on the 26. Well, he knows it. He's probably shot. Yeah, and, and, and the defense wins. I mean, it's a nice catch, but the defense wins. Now, this is, you know, Scott Cooper would know more to make sure he gets past that first down mark. He has to lay out. He comes back to the ball. It's a nice catch, but it's short and sets up fourth down. And a yard. Well, they're going to go for it on fourth down. They lead by eight. We're in the fourth quarter early. This could be an interesting play. Quarterback keeper by Jim Ballard, who today makes his third start, and he may have burrowed enough for the first down near the 25. But I'll tell you, who made the quarterback sneaks the way they run now, when they started doing a few years ago, guys just take the snap and just kind of fall in. Now they take that delay step. And then Randall Cunningham was the guy who really started to do all that. You take that step, let things develop, and then run. Now that's the way everybody does. Ballard does the same thing, just takes that delay step, lets it develop, and then jumps in. And he's got that big line to push it. If you get behind that big rear end of Purvis Hunt, you can go anywhere. It's, that is a big rear end. First down and 10. Stacy on the pitch, doesn't like what he sees left. Fumble! Fumbles it for the fourth time today, and it's a loose ball. And they have not signaled yet. Well, they blow it down. I do not see an official pointing to the ground, which means that's a live ball and should be a fumble. And they're going to have their little powwow over there. Fourth fumble by Stacy today. One See, of which he, he's got to be smarter there. That, that's going the other way. Stacy knew he had nowhere to run. You don't second effort at this point. You just get down. I mean, Barry Sanders gets to this position. You're covered. Get down to the ground. Protect the ball. Here he tries to pick up another half a yard, and the ball pops out. And Johnny Dixon picks it up, and it's over recover, going the other way. The thing about Stacy is he has been as good a running back as this league has ever known. So He's just a little player. Second effort, just got to be a little smart. Second effort's killed him twice now with Fumble. Moore trying to take advantage. His team's down by eight. We're early in the fourth, and the handoff goes to the Vikings. Bobby Phillips, who cuts the corner and runs his way to the up six on first down. Look at Saran right there. Bobby Phillips is a player I think Franklin should use more. I mean, he's, obviously, the last game of the season is a little tough. 
But Bobby Phillips has that Dave Meggett kind of look about him. He's got the quick feet, catching the ball well out of the backfield. He'll go downfield, he'll run the ball quick, he likes to get to the outside. I think they need to integrate him more into their offense. Second down and four. Kalur stands in the pocket, he's got Kearney for the first down. Kearney inside the 40 into the 37 yard line. Nice blocking up front by that offensive line, allows Kalur to have the time. That time Kearney was able to get behind the backers as a flag is thrown and get in front of the secondary and comes up with the play, but that was coming back. You're going to come by next season. We look forward to seeing you, Bobby. Thank you. Ernie Stoddard had to win the last two regular season games. Holding. Offense, number 65. Senior penalty. Repeat second day. Number 65. They caught Collins holding. I'm going to tell you, five games I've watched, that's the first holding it call is. I've seen. I mean, you'll be watching tapes of this league, and the guys are just getting killed in there just getting ripped out <laughs> watch number 65 left side of your screen is going to come in right in here that's what they're going to call and actually i don't even like the call he got his left hand up high in his throat but he got it back down quick second down 14 four goes down he eats the ball and coming through was brian proby the arizona state wildcat or uh out of the Kansas City Chiefs allocation program. It's a nice pass rush by Proby. He's got to the corner. Anytime you can get that step on the corner of the offensive lineman, you're going to beat it. 25 yards. That first penalty on Collins killed him. I mean, that was a 30-yard difference. And then the sack takes off another 10. He got third and forever. Roby, 6'5", played for the Sun Devils at Arizona State. And a timeout taken by Steve Pallor. Means he's got two remaining. He'll go over and talk with Ernie Stoddard. We're in the fourth quarter, the team with the ball is down by eight. This is for Mr. Blanchard, who told me to make something of myself. For Miss Miller, who never let me settle for a C. For my parents, who believe in my dreams. For myself, for my future. Be all that you can be. Hey, Bullseye! It's finally here. What everyone's been waiting for. The premiere event of the summer. You'll be channel surfing in no time. You'll laugh. I'm just your <laughs> You'll cry. Oh, Billy! You'll guzzle. The buy three, get one free super big gulp offer. Featuring special cable guy cuts. Now appearing at a 7-Eleven near you. Kids love playing at McDonald's. Come on, Ma, let's play. Even grown-up kids, because they can play the new Deluxe Monopoly game. Enjoy the new Arch Deluxe and you could win big prizes instantly. A million dollars, a saline Mustang, even cash on the spot. Huh, you win anything big, Mama? We did! We won! I want to do a kid play. Have you had your break today? I want to vote playing a McDonald's game. You can win big, too, playing Deluxe Monopoly. Well, before the game, outside, here at the end, Edinburgh, Scotland, they had what they call power parties that the World League puts on outside before the game with the face painting and the concerts, and they've got thousands and thousands of moms, dads, and kids. Now they're inside. I tell you, you get to a game over here, it's like you go to a party and a game breaks out. <laughs> they... They have a blast over here. I mean, they warned me when I got here that Frankfurt was going to be amazing, and it was. And I didn't believe myself. I said, ah, it's going to be like, you know, one of the big games in the States. It's not even close. These people come to have a blast. Scotland had the best regular season record. Frankfurt won their last two games to get in for a second consecutive year. Now it's third down. And Kalur's got to get to the 44, and he'll go to the air, and he locates Pick. the interception pulled down by James Fuller, number 20 from Portland State. 
and he's brought down by Gary Hill and Steve Poor and has turned it over with an interception for the first time today. And the whole thing is set up by the holding call by Collins. They went from a first down, they lost about 30 yards of field position, then the sack as the flag is thrown again. Now you have them third and long, you sit back in your zone, and you make them have to throw to you. Everything's in front of you, you're James Fuller, you let the ball come right to you. Penalty was called on the return, and it was charged against Scotland. The interception will stand. And the ball will be marched back, but nonetheless deep in the Frankfurt territory and downstairs to Bill Moss. Number 20, the taunting, spiking ball and a player. 15 yards, first down. 15 yards, that official was not Bill Moss. Bill doesn't look that good. <laughs> now let's go to Bill. Hey guys, that foul was on James Fuller. And it was unsportsmanlike conduct. He spiked the ball at the foot of the intended receiver because James Fuller was on the Frankfurt Galaxy at the beginning of the season and Ernie Stottner cut him. And he's out here playing with revenge. He had a good one to get revenge with. Nice pick. First down and ten by Ballard, who guns it. Oh, That's almost, almost gave it back. Off. Almost intercepted by Chris Hall. It's incomplete. Second down and ten. That's the second time I've seen Ballard force a throw. Remember earlier in the game, Chris Hall almost had a pick. He tried to force that one, and then this one here, Dixon almost has the pick. Ballard on the back of his helmet has a Kansas City Chiefs sticker. He is using the helmet of the other quarterback, Steve Matthews, who is an allocated player for the Kansas City Chiefs because Ballard's helmet is in repair. Second down and 10. And they get it out on Dickerson. Just played for Kansas City and the Philadelphia Eagles back in 95 and their camp has run out of bounds. A nice looking pass. It'll be third down. Ron Dickerson's dad is Ron Sr., who's the head coach at Temple. Also coached at Penn State early, where Ron grew up, was a senior in State College High School, went to Arkansas. Right. Where he was a great track player. The former at 100 yards. Hurdles. Third down, about two and a half. Nelly. And they try the fake, and it goes back to the quarterback who throws downfield, and it's incomplete to Ron Dickerson. Wow. <laughs> they tried to flee flicker. They stayed with the coverage all the way. I'll tell you, Scott Cooper makes a heck of an effort to get the ball back to Ballard to make this throw. To Stacy, to Cooper, he's about to get waxed, and he throws it back, and Ballard is able to make this throw, but the coverage is downfield. That ball touched about everybody's hands on the <laughs> offense. <laughs> I think it did. Now Dickerson's going up the sideline, but there's nice coverage, and actually it's a good job of Dickerson on Fred Foggy turning into a defender. And he doesn't allow Foggy to make that interception, knocks it away. There's Paul McCallum in the game. Remember, he hit that 46-yarder earlier. This is going to be a 50-yarder, which would be four, four points. points. The last time he kicked it, that 46-yarder, he had about 15 to 20 yards on it. He has never kicked one from this far in this league. So four points becomes pretty big when you think about it being an eight-point game right now. Well, this would be two touchdowns instead of a touchdown, two-point conversion, and a field goal. Willie Tate, the tight end, will hold for Paul McCallum from the CFL, and he's got the angle. Does he have the distance? That's four points on a 50-yard field goal by Paul McCallum. Thirty-two to twenty, the Scottish Claymores in World Bowl ninety-six. TV's most original comedies are on Fox's Funny Sunday. Donnie behave themselves around the rich and famous. Hey! Don't count on it. Peanut butter and jelly at home, my father.
New York Day is a brand new episode. And how tight is the Bundy budget? Here's someone who might make less than your father. Eskimo blubber chewer. Nope. Married with children, followed by a brand new crew. It all starts tonight at 8, 7 Central. Have you watched what's happening on Fox 40 News at 10? It digs deeper, asks tough questions, and lives in your world. No one captures or tells the stories quite like Fox. They want something different. They want something unique. Fox 40 News at 10. A different news tonight. We've all got things to do, right? Like pick up the kids, go grocery shopping, move some furniture. Of course, that's after you haul that load of sand for the new sandbox. Now do it all in a Jimmy from GMC. With spacious cargo room, a V6 standard, and plenty of comfort for the long haul. And with 4.8% APR financing, you'd be crazy not to do it in a Jimmy. Jimmy from GMC. When you've got to do what you've got to do. See your Valley Sierra GMC dealer today. An ancient idol wants an eye for an eye on the next Highlander. If you want to challenge me, do so. Sunday night at 11 on Fox 40. Callum has just kicked a four-point 50. So far it has. Two fumbles on kickoff to have turned into touchdowns. And then Paul McCallum with a four-yard field goal. Back up to you guys. And one of the leaders of those special teams, Ben Torriero, 44, the captain of the special team. He painted his face. Paints his face in the colors of the country. Runs down like a maniac. He thought about wearing a kilt for the game. Well, he wore one this morning. Couldn't wear it in the uniform, though. <laughs> Gavin Hastings will kick off. And it will go a little bit short, and it's bobbled. And finally picked up by Bailey, who's down at the 17. And there again come the special teams into play. You mentioned about Torriero, about him wearing a kilt. Now, he was here at the beginning of the game, and he had that kilt on. So I went over to him, and I asked him, Ben, what the heck do you wear under your kilt? He says, a smile. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else. First generation Scott, born here in Edinburgh. And the son of Italian parents, Torriero. First down and ten. Palura's got his hands full. The former Cowboy and Chiefs quarterback. And they got movement on that line. And there go the flags. And they'll blow it dead with nine and a half minutes remaining. And the team with the ball, Frankfurt, down 32 to 20. That who's fired up down there is that Joe O'Brien, number nine. He's working over for George Hegeman. Your guy. Hey, old George. It's 350. O'Brien weighs about 265, 270. But I tell you, it's not the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. And that's what he is right there. You should have used the, the dog, the Scotty. The Scott. There's the World Bowl trophy right there. First down and oh! with the penalty. And Pelour across the middle. West Bender out of USC. Caught it at the 20 and spun to the 23, the former Kansas City Chief of Los Angeles, now Oakland Raiders. West Bend. Tell you, Joe O'Brien came off the corner there and just went for the wicked club inside to Hegeman. Now, Hegeman's 350. You're going to watch him down the right side of your screen, number 95. Watch him. He's going to come out. Here comes the club inside. Hegeman at 350 doesn't blink. But O'Brien has the presence to work back outside. Second down and seven. Pelour on the money. He's got the first down reception to Mario Bailey. 5'9 wide receiver out of Washington. Little urgency now on the part of Franklin. Getting up to the line quickly and trying to get that ball. This time O'Brien's going to try to work back outside. Trying to get to the corner of Hegman where he's had problems. You start the first time, start inside. Now you work back outside, make him work his feet. Hegman wins the battle. Flag thrown on that first and ten call by Pelour. You can see with almost nine minutes left to go. Illegal snap, number 62, five yard penalty, still first down. Toby Mills, number 62, who has started every game he has ever played in the World League, is guilty of the illegal snap. What the heck is an illegal snap? I was, just, I was looking at you, and I... Never had I one see, I see you're as 
such a doom cup as me. <laughs> Multilingual here in the world. <laughs> First and 15. Back to the 28. And Palour from the shotgun, and he's got oh. Kearney who waited on the ball and was brought down after a gain of three. Palour, yeah, let's take a look at what an illegal a snap really is. I mean, it may be one of those okey dokes where you start once and then you stop. Watch Toby Mills. See, he snapped once and then pulled it back. That's what he did. See, he gave it the old okey doke. He gave him once, tried to get somebody, put it back. What is that in Scottish, the okey doke? It's uh, okay with me, lad. <laughs> Sets up second and about nine. From the 34. Once again, Pelour is in the gun. The blitz is not on. The quick handoff goes to Seibert, the national player from Munich, and he bangs for three to the 37. The clock, about the halfway point of this fourth quarter, and the team with the ball, the Frankfurt Galaxy, trailing 32 to 20. Remember that four-point field goal turned this into a two-touchdown game. Third down and six for Palour. Moves up in the pocket, throws the pass, and it's incomplete. Looking for Gary Harrell, and he caught it. Would have been good for a first down to the 46, and they have forced, once again, the Frankfurt offense to punt the ball. Well, Palour knew where he had to go. What they were doing was they were running man under, too deep. And what you do is you try to let your defender get on top of you. This time he cuts back underneath the Fuller. Fuller does a nice job of recovering, coming back and getting his hand in there. That's good defense. Fury, who punts the ball and was injured earlier in the game, gets off a punt to Marcus Thomas of Scotland, who takes it from the 20, and then he's up by the 25 and finally brought down at the 27-yard line. 43-yard punt, 7-yard return, 32-20. Scotland leading by 12. Know someone who never eats everything on their plate? His offensive lineman time is running out, and that offense has got to start producing. What you all got to do, though, you all got to get back and up fast. Our time is too short. Our time is too short. It has to be. You heard Ernie Starner talking to that offensive line. First of all, the clock starts as soon as the play's over. So the so offensive run line, field. you really got to get up there. Even if you go with your hurry-up offense, just, the quarterback still has to see what he's got. Hurry it up. You got to get up the line fast. We don't have enough time left to go to All right? So you start, get up to the line of scrimmage as fast as you can. You have to give your quarterback time to, to make the call. And if you're just kind of lollygagging around, it's not going to happen as you look at the World Bowl trophy. Galaxy won last year, 26-22 over Amsterdam, and they're defending it today against arguably the best overall team in the league, the Scottish Claymores. And last year, Paul Justin won it, right. and also won himself a spot with the Indianapolis Colts. So this, and they like him. This league has produced NFL caliber players. Jim Kreiner, a world-renowned fly fisherman who left football, in fact, for a good part of six different seasons to go and run a shop up in Montana selling bait, selling equipment. He has sold success on the Scotland team. They've got it first down and 10 from the 28-yard line, and Ballard has had a big day going deep once again. And the catch is... <laughs> Hey, not me. That was out of bounds, but Yo Murphy pulled that one out again. <laughs> That's a great catch. Incomplete, out of bounds, second down and ten. Now, I don't know what his shortcomings are. I mean, I don't know what Yo Murphy, can he not run? Does he not run good run? I don't know because I haven't really had a chance to study him. But when it comes to catching the ball and going up and making the catch, look, you, this stuff you don't teach. See that? That's concentration. He came down out of bounds. That's a great effort. Second down and ten. Siran Stacy, his flags go down, and he moves a pile, he does. Uh, Stacy past the 35, and he's out to the 36-yard line. That looked like a scrum right there. Which this field is used for. This is a rugby field, not used for soccer. Track and field and rugby, and they have converted it to the nfl size field for today. It's a beautiful field. Stadium is nice. It's a it's this is going to be uh, offsides on Frankfurt's defense. They're going to have to make a decision either go second and five or third and two.
some discussion going on in American football. You can uh, watch Just like Kevin Kreiner is going to take the second and five, which is the good move. Defense, number 59, five-yard penalty, repeat, second down. 554, fourth quarter, World Bowl 96. Scotland looking for their first title. They lead by 12. Frankfurt won it last year. Frankfurt became just the first team to make two appearances in this World Bowl game. Winning it last year and appearing as a participant this year. Second five. And Stacy slants to the 35. Two yard shot of the first down. That's an outfit. That's a get-up right there. That's a get-up and go. <laughs> you get up like that. You know, at go. one point this morning, at one point, that guy looked in the mirror and said, there, I'm done. It looks yeah. good. <laughs> how, does he, how does he know what he's what done? The, that's what I say. How, how do you, you know, know you look good? You know, what's your tweet? What the heck do you, you look? Do you again? look at your wife? <laughs> so, honey, what do you think? Third down and about uh, two and a half to three. Stacy outside needs to get to the 37 and his way short of that. Doesn't even get to the line of scrimmage. Nice play there by Wolfork. Wolfork worked upfield, turned everything back inside, and everybody came in and made the tackle. Jason Buck, who played on a Redskins Super Bowl championship team with you. Yes, he did. And he had gotten out of football. Has a 650-acre farm down in Utah. Four kids. He's got his kids. Said he got a call. Thought it was the some of his ranch hands <laughs> messing with him, so he hung the phone up. <laughs> McCallum's punt is short and covered well, and out of the in the fourth quarter. 32 to 20, Scotland by 12. That was a 30-yard punt. Bob Palou has got to produce because the time is four and a half minutes. Very, very short. You need two scores. So you come down here, you can. Get your score here. You'd have to get the ball back again. If you score quick, you're okay. If you don't, if you take the time off the clock, you have to about think about onside kick or anything like that. But in four and a half minutes, you still have a lot of time. George Michael will quickly check in with Pete McCallum right after this first down play. Press the 10, Frank Frank Alexey in the 35. Pelour has platoon, four wide receivers, first down and 10, and now it becomes an urgent situation as Pelour will go deep. And he's looking for Harrell, and it's incomplete at the 30-yard line. That's a nice job by Harrell. That ball looked like it was going to be intercepted by Fuller. Harrell goes up there and knocks that thing down, makes sure it doesn't get picked. That's good football by Harrell. The American pronunciation is Harrell, but over here they call him Harrell, so we're kind of bouncing back and forth with the pronunciation. I guess when you're... You know, in any language, though, he did a good job. Yes. That was good football. There's Ray Wilde, the defensive coordinator, playing mostly zone now. What he wants is... For Pelour to throw it underneath, and then you come up and make the tackle. That time they did throw it underneath, and they picked up the first. Mario Bailey scrambles for the first down, picking up 11. Bailey, in the beginning of the third quarter, was the entire offense, and since then we haven't heard much about him. Very quiet. pelour has been quiet. First and 10 from the 46, and once again, Pelour operating out of the gun. And he's got Harrell, who is out of bounds at the 38, and picks up 16 yards. Well, they're doing it the right way. And they're not using much of the clock. You're a little under four minutes. They're moving the ball down the field. They're using the sideline as their friend. Get out of bounds. Stop that clock. Just keep the ball moving. 17-yard pickup by Harrell. At one point, Ray Wilsey is going to have to switch up his defense. They're playing pure zone and sitting back. And they're moving the ball down. Now, have to do. he's giving them a press look right now. First and ten, Pelour fields a bad snap, takes a whipping as he throws to the near side, and the pass is caught. That's Bellamy, first down, a gain of 11, and the clock continues to go at 340. That's a nice throw. We talked about having to change things up. That time, Scotland came up, they went man under, too deep. They pressed at the line of scrimmage. They're trying to disrupt the rhythm of Pelour. First and ten from the 25. And Pelour finds another wide receiver. He's at the 20, and he picks up Bellamy, who gains six yards. He's still in great shape. Clock is on their side. And they've got two timeouts. Now they're on the 20-yard line, 19-yard line. 
Now the field starts to shrink, and it starts to work against you. Defenses can be a little bit tighter in their coverage. Second down, three, Pallor. He has him again. Kearney this time, and out of bounds. Wisely with the first down in tow to the 11 in a late flag, and another one. Probably be a... Well, I won't say, but... They have gotten a face mask on him as he was taking him out of bounds. That's what it looked like. So that you, you say the options decrease for the offense. Well, not necessarily your options, but your field decreases. And what happens as the field shrinks, the coverage starts to tighten, and you can do less things in terms of vertical and everything else. The brakes get crisper. You can stay on your coverage a little bit longer. You can get jammed, and the ball has to come out quicker. First down. Corey Duckett picks it up. You see him, he's out of Michigan State. And then Nevada Reno is where he ended up. It's a first down on the five yard line. You could not have drawn this up any better for Steve Floor. To complete it, obviously, he has to get it into the end zone. He's had a good drive, too. Four of five, Pelour on this drive. First and goal from the five, and Pelour with all kinds of time to throw. Hits this receiver for the touchdown, Mike Bellamy. His first touchdown of the year. Well, now you just go for one. You don't have to go for two because you need another touchdown, which is what they'll do. Mike Bellamy, his first touchdown reception of the season. Now it is a 32 to 26 game and 250 remains on the fourth quarter clock. And now that four point 50 yard field goal kicked by Scotland is, as you mentioned before, huge. And you also have to look at back at the two extra points that Gavin Hastings missed. Kleinman will try the extra point for Frankfurt, and he hits it. The kick is out, and the kick is good. 37, make it 32, 27. 32-27, the Claymores. Nice job by that offensive line. You heard the coach starting to tell him, Ernie, starting to say, get up to the line of scrimmage, give yourself some time, give the quarterback a chance to see things over, which he does. Nice protection. Just waits for Bellamy to clear in that zone. And they pass from level to level, and he's in for six. And Pelour was patient. Pelour was patient. Pelour had time. In that whole drive, he was five for six. Look at his time. I mean, he could read War and Peace and still get this ball off. You see George Coghill right there with David Wilson. There was a little bit of a mix-up. Either that or he knew he should have fallen back inside with this cover. Pelour with another touchdown pass today. He's got three of them. 250 remains in the game in the Galaxy. Closing the door down now by just five, 32 to 27. Hey, the one thing that just kind of struck me, had they gone for two, they would have gotten 28 points. And then with a 50-yard field goal, they could tie it. So maybe they should have gone for the two points. What did you write down? I got to see where you computed that. Where did you write that down? Eh, you know, it's Penn State. You know, we, <laughs> Where's your stuff abacus? Stuff just flows. Where's that abacus? Scotland returns it. Scott Cooper brings it up. Scotland has been playing most of the game without Sean LaChapelle, the MVP of the league. Yo Murphy has made some great catches, but he's been banged up a bit and hasn't been playing in every series. He's not returning kicks anymore. Well, and then as well as the game has gone from the, from the first quarter on for Scotland, now is the whole game. Now you got 240 to go. You have to wear the clock down and move the ball. And they'll be operating with all three of their timeouts. And the quick pass to the far side. Yo Murphy runs and gets the first down. Game 13 yards. By the way, just the game. And the VP of World Bowl 96. Well, and he should have. I mean, he shows great presence right here. And he knows he's going to get hit. He makes the catch. He has the first down. So what does he do? Uh, here's the quick catch. Make the catch. Beat the first defender. Now watch at the end of this play. He knows he can go out of bounds, but he doesn't. So he goes down, takes a slide, forces Frankfurt to have to use his timeout. 
Murphy with seven catches, a World Bowl record, 164 yards, three touchdowns. And Frankfurt has stopped the clock. They were going to let the clock run down, the Scottish Claymores were, and trying to get to the two-minute warning, but time remains, and Frankfurt has burned one of their timeouts. Well, and Yo Murphy, you see the seven catches and the three touchdowns. But I'll tell you, that, that one-handed catch in the end zone was just an awesome catch. It doesn't get much better than that. He's put on a clinic today. One timeout for Frankfurt, and... This is the largest World League of American football crowd at Murrayfield here in Scotland. And almost 39,000 people to watch this game. And it's been a good game. It really has been. It's been a little sloppy at times. But you have big plays coming from some players. Joe Murphy, Ballard, Pallor when he's had some time. He has some decent offensive line play, defensive backfield play. Timeout situation. First down and 10 because of Murphy, and they're out at the 35 yard line. Siran Stacy. Now, you got to think about him, and he has fumbled four times today, but he slants his way for a gain of about three. Well, you got to remember, you know, Siran Stacy doesn't go out there to fumble. Siran Stacy goes out there to give his best effort all the time, which he does. In fact, two of those fumbles that he's had have been because of his extra effort. Another timeout taken by Frankfurt, so they are out of timeouts. And again, trying to get that extra timeout with the two-minute warning. Remember I talked about Yo Murphy and that catch. This is the catch that really got them on track for this touchdown. And Yo Murphy, it was all him. Ball was thrown outside. He turned the defender, Chris Hall, around. Now watch this ball is thrown too far. One hand has control. Two feet inbounds. And that's six. That's a great, great catch. It's because of efforts like that that he's been named the MVP of this game. He also had a 71-yard touchdown reception where he shook off the oncoming tackler and raced down the sideline. And at one of his three touchdowns today, Yo Murphy out of Idaho, a Canadian football, British Columbia Lions wide receiver. And he has opened some eyes, I'm sure, today in the NFL with his performance. That ball's batted down on that second down pass. It'll be third down, and right in the way was Bernard Carter. And Bernard Carter got that hand up. Not that thing down. Ballard again was going to Murphy. Carter is a allocated player for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Well, big third down. It's a big third down for Scotland as well as Frankfurt. Two Ernie, minutes to go. Ernie Scotner has worked out this pretty well. He's out of timeouts, but he's going to get the ball back with some time if they don't convert. Flag was thrown on the 50, and it was in the secondary. And Scotland's pointing at Frankfurt. We have an illegal defense on illegal. the previous play. It's a big penalty. Still oh, but forget the penalty is five yards, but it's still second What's down. The They're call? calling it illegal defense. What's the call? Hey, what's the call? This is a national series, and the question now is, do they have the national defensive player out there? What's the call? Now, the only thing an illegal defense would be What's if they the blitzed four guys to a side. What's the call? Because you can only blitz so many players. Three to a side. What was an illegal defense? What was an illegal defense? <laughs> the old press box call. They call it from the press, but you know, that's exactly what you don't want to hear. You want an answer on the field. Absolutely. Hey, you're going to make the call, be responsible, stand up for it. Don't say, hey, we don't know it was from the press box. Or how about, oh, I didn't see it. That wasn't my head. That, back to me, coach. Or, or with the old, it was his call, not yeah. mine. <laughs> well, now you're right. That's a big call. Second I mean, down and two. Second down, two yards to go. You still have third down. You're going to waste what Ernie was working for, getting the timeout with the two-minute warning. Siran Stacy does not get the first down. So it'll be third and one, and we've reached the two-minute warning. 
And the ball is blown dead. And Curtis Cutton can run from here to Frankfurt, and they're not going to call it a touchdown. So the two-minute warning, it'll be third down in a yard. The team with the ball, the Scottish Claymores, what a, uh, with a 32 to 27 lead over the Frankfurt Galaxy. So to call collect, you extend your dialing finger and dial 1-800-C-O-L-L-E-C-T. And why do we dial 1-800-COLLECT instead of zero? To save people up to 44%. What if your dialing finger is injured? You may use an alternate finger and still save. Try it up here, Mr. Fish. I don't do well under pressure. 1-800-COLLECT. Next week, real phones. Real phones? 1-800-COLLECT. Learn it, use it, save up to 44%. Hey, you're a guy, and guys want to be cool. Hang out with other guys who are cool. But even cool guys sweat. 40% more than women, in fact. So how are you going to stay cool? With something new, Speed Stick Gel. Proven to keep you drier than any other gel. So you feel your coolest. It's the best gel protection. And guys, no matter how cool they are, need all the protection they can get. New Speed Stick Gel. It's just for the guys. I'm in it. Come on, man, open up. It's that new kid. Okay, let me hand it. It's first time with a room service. You better give him out the mouth. Oh, no! Fox Saturday Baseball. This week, check local... Saturday Baseball. This week, check local listing. Oh, Scotland with Matt Millen and Bill Moss, Kevin Harlan. World Bowl 96 in Scotland holding on to a five-point lead. They have a third down and one. I would not be a happy head coach with that explanation of the penalty. They called an illegal defense. And, uh, Walt Coleman, who is an NFL referee, is the main man today. He came back and told Ernie Sautner that that was a call from the press box. It was not a call from the field. And the illegal defenses are called from the press box, so he would not have any idea of why it would be. The only two I can think of was if it was a national series, there was no national player. Or the blitz. Or they brought four from one right. side. That one has not been a very good third down team today. Four for 12. They've got to get to the 45. They're inside the 44. Ballard rolls out of the pocket. Gets a great block from Dickerson. Hit as he throws. And the pass is... Incomplete. Incomplete at the 41-yard line. They were going to Yo Murphy. What a Murphy. gutsy call that was. They only needed a yard. Well, you're going to try to cross them up. They're going to try with play action. They went with the roll. Cavallo makes the play. He forces them to pull up. Murphy had beaten them. But then Johnny Dixon got the arm in there, and Murphy could not come back and make the play. Now the punt comes from Paul McCallum, who's been busy most of the day, and he'll be punting to Gary Harrell of the New York Giants. Calls for the fair catch, stopping the clock at 1.45 as he goes to a knee, and he's down at the 27-yard line. Well, 45 remaining in the game. Now they have to score the six points. Remember we talked, had they gone for two, they would have had 28 and a four-point field goal. And this is, what you want. this is what you want. You want the game to come down to one series, and that's what it's going to come down to. As you can see, our game summary, Bill Murphy has already been voted the MVP, the wide receiver from the Scot Scotland team, has had three touchdowns today and seven receptions. There's down and ten. On the 27, Palura in the gun. He sends Harrell in motion. Four receivers for Palura. On first and 10 to the sideline, and he's got the receiver, Bailey. Stops the clock, gets the phone, they keep the clock going. The 38-yard line, we're down to 133. Well, defensively, what you have to do right now, you can't let them get out of bounds. You can make them have the catch, that's fine. They have to score six. Keep things in front of you, defend the perimeter. Don't let them get out of bounds. First and 10 from the 38. Pelour again with the four wide receivers, and he throws... A completed pass. It's not good for a first down. He picks up six on the play as Mario Bailey picks it up again. And the other thing you have to do is you kind of have to lay on that receiver a little bit. And get up a little bit slow. Take off as much time on the clock as you can. Second down and four. Pelour 
to Bailey. Over his head, incomplete. Clock stopped at 59 seconds. That's a good play by Pleur. Just get rid of that ball. If you're not going to be tackled out of bounds, just throw it away. You still, it's third down, but this is four down time of the game. It doesn't matter. Third down. Lord again with the shotgun formation. A flag is thrown. The clock. You know, they blew 55 it. seconds. Yeah, they blew that thing dead, which means it'll be an offensive penalty. False start prior to the snap. And your penalty. That only makes it third and nine. Whatever happens in this drive, Still have two downs for the first. It's more important to keep them in bounds and keep the clock running. Frankford, by the way, just picked up their tenth penalty of the game. Going to put some more time on the clock, which now shows 55 seconds. And they'll put 58 on the clock. Frankfurt trailing 32-27. They've got the ball. They've got it 39. They've got to get to the 48. Kalua, good time. Has Bailey has the first down. If the no, they're keeping the clock running. Clock goes. They get to the 48. They have not signaled a first down yet. And it's not a first down. They have not given them a first down. And about a foot. About the length of the football. Clock at 33 seconds and a bad snap to Pelour. And then it was picked up by the running back. And that was Seibert who gets the first down. Boy, that was a, that's a play. No timeouts for Frankfurt. And they're stopping the clock for what reason? At 19 seconds, they're stopping the clock. And now the referees will confer. And we have a fourth down fumble. Fourth down. We had a what? He called a fumble on Frankfurt. At, on Siebert at the end? They must have called it on Siebert. Ingo Seibert carried the ball on a snap to Pelour that was muffed. The ball is snapped before Pelour is ready. Seibert picks it up. He's not down. Keep going. Ball's fine. Now he's hit. If they're... You... You can't call him down by that knee. That's a live ball. You just keep on going. I'm not understanding what I'm seeing here. So he gets the fumble on a knee and he's down. No, no, that's that shouldn't be. But that's what they're saying because they're moving the ball where the knee went down at the 40-yard line. And I'm not gonna say a single thing until we've played that down of football, but you know what we're thinking upstairs. If it's a fumble, unless they're not calling it a fumble, 
It doesn't matter, it would be a four allow. It's just like taking the snap. And that ball should be able to be advanced. Advance a fumble the last two minutes of the game. That would be, that's the old Raider rule. That goes back, to, that's the Dave Casper rule. when he kicked the ball ahead. That's right. But I never saw it applied like that. That's the Once you fumble the ball, you have to recover the ball. Now they're saying that a bad snap is a fumble. And that's what I would dispute. Pelour was under center. The ball goes through his legs. Right. Simon is in the backfield. Gets the ball. When he gets the loose ball, he goes down on the knee. They They're saying that that was a fumble. And if it is a fumble at the end of the game, then the guy who fumbled it has to also recover it. They're saying Pelour fumbled it, but he never had the ball. They're saying that a bad snap is the fumble. Under two minutes. You can't advance the fumble. Right, that's the Dave Casper Raider rule. We go downstairs to a victorious Jim Kreiner with our Bill Moss. Coach, congratulations on the World Bowl Championship. A far cry from your... ...players and the coaches and the kind of job that they did. Tremendous efforts by our football team today, and I'm very, very proud of them. Coach, all through the season, you've had adversity changes, you've had receivers go down, defensive linemen, but your guys, when a number was called, they answered it. They have. They played. They continue to play together as a team and play hard, and, and we had the right chemistry, we thought, and I think that's the reason why we've had the character of the football team to be able to come through no matter what the odds. Congratulations on World Bowl champions. Thank, Thank you. you Let's go enjoy it with your team. Thank you. Back up to you guys. Final score is 32-27. The Scottish Claymores come out a victor in a very interesting ending to this World Bowl 96 game. Well, and that's, you know, and that's the thing. You know, the red old Raider rule is there. And it happened when Dave Casper fumbled the ball, tried to kick it through, and then somebody picked it up in the end zone. It was a touchdown. And so the league put the rule in. If you fumble the ball within two minutes, two minutes of the game, the guy who fumbles it has to recover it. So there, but I've never seen it like that. So the ball comes through the legs of Pelor. Dybert picks it up and keeps on going. They're saying that that was a fumble at the snap. Therefore, Pelor would have had to been the one to pick it up and advance it. And James Brown, an interesting ending to this World Bowl 96 as Scotland is the champion, winning 32 to 27. That it was, Kevin, but a perfect season at home for the Scottish Claymore. 6-0 at home this season, a complete turnaround from last season when they were 0-5 at home. John, you were smiling when Matt was talking about that Dave Casper play. You were coaching there. Yeah, I never thought that the game that we played, it was in 1978 against the San Diego Chargers. We had no timeout. Kenny Stabler fumbles the ball. Now he knows he has no timeout. Pete Banizak goes to pick it up, but he knows if he picks it up, he's going to get it, so he can't pick it up, so he fumbles it. Dave Casper finally gets it about the one-yard line. He knows if he picks it up there, the game's over. He fumbles it into the end zone and drops on it. So we, we score a touchdown. We win the game. So then they put the rule in that the guy that fumbles on fourth down can't, is the only guy that can recover his own fumble. A good, you know what a, I mean. A good, solid play. It's a good, <laughs> solid play. It's a good, solid rule that, you know, we were part of. And here, years later, we see it in the World Bowl. And Lo a, and behold. Yes, what a neat game. We see, we see a World Bowl record crowd come into Edinburgh today. A really competitive football game. Congratulations to the Claymores. The team I knew that would win. You called it at the top. John designed that play, that fumble play. I like that. All right, folks. Bet on we've that. got more coming your way with the World Bowl presentation. The World 96 winners, the Scottish Claymores, will do all of that after this.
You're watching a Fox NFL. 27. It was a big day, an MVP type game. In World Bowl 96 for Yo Murphy. Three touchdowns, 164 yards on seven receptions. And he was a huge difference in this game. He really was. You know, Sean LaChapelle went down with a groin injury. Somebody had to step up. He said, who is it going to be? Yo Murphy took it over. Jim Ballard had the presence to be able to find him. Murphy made some acrobatic catches. We saw the one-handed catch, as well as the 70-yarder, and he was the difference for the Frank for the uh, Scottish offense in the second half. Once again, let's look at what we think is as good a catch as we've seen all season long off the throw of Jim Ballard, who threw three touchdowns and all to Murphy today. Well, I got to tell you something. You can look in a bunch of different seasons. <laughs> it doesn't matter. And I mean, I'm talking all the, that's as fine a catch as you're ever going to see right there. And Yo Murphy put the period on his MVP game. Set a record with the three touchdown receptions. Set a record with 164 yards. And his seven catches paced the way for the Claymores. And our Bill Moss is standing by with the MVP. Bill? Okay, thanks, Kevin. Yo, congratulations, MVP. You know, you were telling me all along you were waiting to get your shot, and today you had a chance. You know what, it couldn't have come on a better day. Uh, Sean hurt himself, and they told me I had to step up, and that's what I did. You know, got blessed a little bit, and it worked out. If, if you could, could you walk me through the one touchdown catch over in the corner that Matt was so impressed with? Well, you know, um, I ran a post corner, and he just jumped hard inside, and he threw it over the top, and I, you know, I just knew I was going to catch it. I didn't know how, but, you know, I just brought it in. So Congratulations good. on a great game and being MVP. Back up to you guys. Thank you, Bill. And the awarding of the World Bowl trophy now from NFL president Neil Austrian. And Neil is in authentic Scottish attire, wearing a kilt. His mom's side of the family is from Scotland, the Davis family. And he's wearing the Davis clan cover. the National Football League and the World League, I first like to thank the great fans here in Edinburgh today for of applause to Ernie Stauntner and the Frankfurt Galaxy for making it a great game. And now I'd like to ask Oliver Luck, the president of the World League, to really give a round of applause to the, to the Scottish Claymores and Jim Kreiner the new champions. <laughs> Scottish Claymores, head coach Jim Kreiner, you have brought the World Bowl to Edinburgh. You are the 1996 World Bowl champs. Please raise the trophy high. Thank you. Thank you very much. I can't say enough about the tremendous support that we received from Mike Keller and the administrative staff, from the coaches, the players, but very much especially from you. Thank you very much from the football team. So the Scottish Claymores went at 32 to 27. Now for Matt Millen and Bill Moss, our producer Jeff Gowan and director Ken Fouts, Kevin Harlan from Scotland. Let's go back to Hollywood and JB. All right, Kevin, thank you very much. The 38000 on hand there certainly got their money's worth. And I, I guess the question is, do you think John Madden got his money's worth in the studio here today? I think John Madden probably has had as much fun today and enjoyed doing football. I don't think it's would measure to anything, really. What? Well, yeah, it was a good, solid day. Good, solid day of football in June. You can't beat that. I love it. Poor John Madden.
<laughs> Howie Long, Terry Bradshaw, we're saying so long. We're going to see you guys back August the 10th, first preseason game right here on Fox. Chargers and 49ers, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Until then, we'll see you later. Tonight at 7.